Well, that's what this game is all about. My old Kentucky home, you see blue and red scattered about Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Of course, there's a lot of uh, Kentucky people that live in Louisville and fans uh, for both schools until they have to uh, make a decision on this particular Saturday. But Craig, there's no question about it. All summer long, yeah, the teams and the fans talk about it. But it has elevated football, as we talked about throughout the course of this pregame show. And really, when Howard Schnellenberger and Bill Olson and everybody got together, that was the bottom line. And all you got to do is look at that picture, and that tells the whole story. Yeah, it's been very successful bringing this rivalry back again. And I think Coach Schnellenberger, uh, a while back when they were getting it going, he said, you know, the important thing is after 10 years, it's going to be 5-5. Five, five, and after 20 years, it's going to be 10-10. Ten, ten, but it's going to elevate football in the state. And now you've got Chris Redman, Tim Couch, the great players staying home. They're not going to Notre Dame or Tennessee. Uh, they're staying home playing for Louisville and Kentucky. And that's really what it's done. It's elevated the sport throughout the state. And the amazing thing is there's so much youth on both of these teams. You take the two quarterbacks. Uh, when you look at that, that means this series obviously has a great future, too. These are young talent here today. Yeah, it really is. On both sides of the ball with Ragone and Lorenzen, and you've got some good running backs. Uh, at Louisville and on the other side receivers. I mean, the, the talent level, I think, on both schools has been rising steadily over the last 10 years. And I think that's what you really need. Both programs right now are, are starting to crack into the top 20. And by elevating the uh, stature of the teams and the stature of the game, you're only going to attract better players. And these are outstanding coaches. We mentioned the fact the exciting thing about it, you know that both of these programs are going to get nothing but better and better in the years to come. And how Mummy's made a long-term commitment to the University of Kentucky and John L. Smith has done the same thing. And I know as a former recruiter, you like to say that head coach is going to be there for a while. Yes, yeah, stability in the program is undoubtedly one of the things recruits look to. Another thing, I mean, look at the surroundings here. Papa John Stadium, Commonwealth Stadium. You've got two of the finest facilities and you've got administrations and schools that really are into sports and football. And it, they've got exciting futures on both sides. Now, we don't want to put you on the spot, but a lot of people think this may not be a high-scoring offense affair. You think the defenses will really play a key part? I really do. I think you've got defenses that have both improved from a year ago, and uh, both quarterbacks are young. I know uh, Kentucky, they're really going to throw it around. Louisville does somewhat, but I think the offensive coordinators got to, you know, make the game plan a little, little simpler for these new quarterbacks, and maybe, you know, after the last two years, though, I mean, 30 to 30 is low scoring. Yeah, it is. Well, that wraps it up for our countdown to kickoff. We have our live game coverage coming up in just a couple of minutes. We're glad you joined us here and got some of the sights and sound. The Cards and the Cats and the Cards on Fox coming up next. Stay with us. For the seventh straight year, the college football season in the Commonwealth begins with the game that generates a lot of speculation and excitement for the entire season. The Cards and the Cats. The modern day series is tied at three games each, and the past two games saw the visiting team spoil a stadium opening and a stadium renovation celebration. It's more than bragging rights. It's the emotion of two rising, explosive football programs. It's Louisville and Kentucky. The battle for the Governor's Cup is next. live to Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The Cards and the Cats here, the Cards on Fox. The rubber match in the modern era. Each team has won three games apiece, and they're on their feet and shouting here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Glad you joined us as the Cardinal Bird ready for the boxing match here. I'm Don Russell along with Craig Swaback. Glad to have you along for the Cards on Fox here in Louisville and in Bowling Green. And Craig, you know, everybody's talked about this game. Everybody's talked about, obviously, the two quarterbacks. And I guess it's no surprise that that's the subject of our Lincoln Mercury matchup. Yeah, it sure is. You've got two left-handed quarterbacks tonight making their first start. Dave Ragone for Louisville. He's a sophomore. He's taken two whole snaps in his college career. Jared Lorenzen, the big guy from Kentucky, making his first start. Uh, true freshman. Uh, it ought to be exciting to see what these two lefties can do. Look at that. Both 6'4", but Lorenzen weighs about 40 pounds more than Dave Ragone. But these two guys really under a lot of pressure. We'll put them under the microscope and see how they're going to do. What about some of the key elements with our Bud Light game plan, Craig? Well, the Bud Light game plan to start with, University of Kentucky, they've got to protect Jared Lorenzen. Uh, last year they gave up eight sacks in this game. They need to keep him clean. 
brand new defensive tackles. They've got two true freshmen starting in the defensive line. They're going to have to have some production out of those guys. And lastly, contain Arnold Jackson. Everyone's talking about the quarterbacks, but we've got the leading receiver in Division I coming back this year, so they're going to have to keep him under the wraps. For Louisville, they need to start off with offensive line must produce. They've got to not only protect Ragone, they've got to get some holes. They've got a young running back, so they've got to do the good job on the offensive line. Put pressure on Lorenzen. You cannot let the Kentucky quarterback get into a rhythm on that passing attack they've got. Last special teams mistakes. Can't afford any mistakes with Mum Coach Mummy's trickery in the special team, so they'll have to be sharp there. That's our Bud Light game plan as the Cardinals and the Kentucky Wildcats ready to get it on. It's time to stop talking. It's time to tee it up. We have time for your last pit stop. The kickoff between the Cards and the Cats. You better take it now. It's coming up next. Fans, the Cardware Store has the largest selection of U of L clothing and accessories anywhere. Cardware has dozens of new styles of sweatshirts, coats, hats, flags, blankets, gloves, and your favorite novelty accessories. If you checked us out last year, come see this year's new selection. Whether you're big or small, young or old, if you're a U of L fan, there's something here for you at Cardware. And new items arrive daily. Stop in at Cardware on Shelbyville Road, across from Oxmoor. Josh. I think we should see other people. Fox are brought to you by Pepsi, who gives thirsty people good things to drink. By Kroger, go cards, go Krogering. By Jewish Hospital, the best place for your heart. By Powertail, you want affordable wireless service? We're on that. By the Kentucky Lottery, somebody's going to win, might as well be you. By Papa John's, try our new thin crust pizza, Papa John's. And by the UofL Cardware Store, the largest selection of UofL merchandise anywhere. The cards are on Fox. Well, the Cardinal bird is ready. The Louisville Cardinals with an updated and renovated logo. The Kentucky Wildcats and the Louisville Cardinals. Everybody's been talking about this game. You see the captains coming out for both teams. And you can feel the excitement, Craig, in this building. Yeah, the place, the excitement is unbelievable. It's rocking out here tonight, and uh, it's the only place to be, either in the stadium or live on DRB tonight. Well, again, we'd like to welcome our viewers on WKNT-TV, the Fox Channel 40 in Bowling Green. Brett Comwell, the general manager, thanks for having our coverage available in Bowling Green. And here come the Cardinals. to go. What a job he has done with the Louisville Cardinals, his third year, 14 and 10 record. Craig, two straight back-to-back -back seven win seasons and two bowl games. And now I guess the goal is to win a conference championship and to win a bowl game. Yeah, it really is. What he's done so far is amazing, but his goals are set much higher than just uh, winning seasons and going to bowl games. He wants to take it to the next level, win the conference, win the bowl game, get up in the national rankings. Well, the Cardinals ready to head out on the field. And it looks like Louisville will be kicking off. And it's redshirt freshman Wade Talashka. He's a redshirt freshman, Craig, out of Trinity here in Louisville. And I can tell you, as a former kicker, this is not the initial game you want to try to perform in. <laughs> no kidding, but uh, I'm sure he's excited to do it. And we'll get a chance to look at the new Kentucky quarterback right out of the gate. He has it teed up. Shanklin will be standing back at the goal line. He has a couple of up men. Chad Scott. And 
Martez Johnson to the near side. And the 2000 season is underway, a very short kick. It'll be taken at the 18-yard line as Martez Johnson returns it to the 32, 33-yard line before Michael Everett comes up to make the hit for the Louisville Cardinals. You know, I'm not sure if that was a pooch kick by design or if he just didn't hit it well, but it was a short kick and a nice little return, good field position out to the 30. Those are the high school numbers of Jared Laringen, the redshirt freshman. Some impressive numbers indeed. Of course, he was Mr. Football in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And he'll have the first opportunity here for the Kentucky offense against the Louisville defense as we are underway. And Dave Ragone waiting patiently on the sideline for his opportunity. A single set back behind Lorenzen. And he bootlegs, now he's looking, now he's gonna step up and run. The big guy's got a lot of room, has the first down, still on his feet. Down to the 40, 38 yard line of Louisville. Jared Lorenzen, that's the other element that he brings to the offense for Kentucky. Sure is, he's jacked up right now. Nice run, here's a replay of it. Little bootleg action out here. Louisville did a great job of covering all the receivers. Right now, everyone's covered. Was trying to go to the tight end. Unfortunately, the safeties here lost the side of the quarterback. And uh, once he gets out in the open field, nice little run. And if you're gonna tackle him, like Roundtree said earlier, you gotta hit him low. And it was finally Rashad Holman after a 33-yard pickup by freshman Jared Lorenzen. And he is a horse. First and 10, Kentucky at the Louisville 38 yard line. And they give it off to the second man, that's Kiner, Artus Peener from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, knocked down by Derek Kennedy. Our Smith's Furniture starting lineup. Craig, you look at that offensive line, that includes a true freshman at right tackle in Antonio Hall. You know, he's really got to be a player. If there's one place that's hard to start as a true freshman, it's on the offensive line. And he's on the blind side of Lorenzen, so he'll have a tough job tonight. And you see the backs and receivers for the Kentucky Wildcats after Pinner picks up about three yards, make it second down, and we'll call it eight. Dougie Allen in motion for the Cats. Lorenzen from the shotgun. Pump fakes, now he throws, wide open at the 15-yard line. Dougie Allen, touchdown, Kentucky! Well, the young freshman, the redshirt freshman, well, I tell you what, Craig, he moved him down the field with a lot of authority. Yeah, you want to get out of the gate and have some success, which he did. Once again, Louisville had good cut. Bad snap, and it's covered up by number 16, Mark Perry, so the conversion point fails. Yeah, and that could, that could be big later in the game. Once again, Louisville had good initial coverage. They had the receivers covered. Defensive line didn't get to the quarterback, and uh, secondary receiver got open. So the Cats get on the board first in our Jewish Hospital first quarter. We'll be right back. To our Jewish Hospital first quarter, the Kentucky Wildcats on a 34-yard touchdown pass. And our Cross Pontiac GMC Jeep scoring drive. As you see it right there. Well, you saw it for a moment. There it is, 69 yards, three plays, 34 yards, the final distance. Lorenzo to Allen, don't forget Cross Motors. Glad to have Tom Jezekaitis, Dave Moser, and Joe Cross, the owner, and the, all the fine folks at Cross Motors back for another year for the Cards on Fox. Clint Ruth has it teed up. Zeke Parker will await the kick. And Zeke looks like he's gonna have a chance at the 10. Parker with great speed, looking for some blockers. Zeke Parker gets it out to the 46-yard line. Leonard Burress came up to make the stop. 37 yards on the return. I'll tell you, you don't have much time to catch your breath in this game, Donnie. They're starting out both teams up and down the field. Of course, Zeke Parker, a world-class sprinter, last year had three touchdowns returned for kicks, and one actually brought back 
because of a penalty. And now we're going to see Dave Ragone and the Louisville offense. Well, we didn't get very far in our Smith's Furniture starting lineup before something happened. So we'll pick it up here as we look at Ragone. Those are his high school numbers. And a give to 27. That's Tony Stallings, the junior from Bedford, Ohio. Knocked down by Murphy and Gaten. Our Smith's Furniture starting lineups for Louisville. A lot of new faces, but the middle of that offensive line, Craig, is returning. Yeah, the three inside guys are returning, and the two outside guys, are, which are your real big pass protectors, are new. So take a look at them tonight and see how they do. And you see the tight end and the other receivers in the backs behind Dave Ragone as the Cardinals face a second down and five, trailing 6 nothing in this matchup as you look at the left-hander out of Middletown Heights, Ohio. And Ragone going to try to run himself this time. Breaks one tackle and picks up two, maybe three tough yards. He's knocked down by Chris Guyton. And the Kentucky defense, you see Leo Robertson, Cottle, and Johnson. Those are two true freshmen again as you look at the linebackers. Yeah, you've got two uh, inside guys going against the veteran guys for Louisville. So that'll be an interesting matchup all night long, see if they can run the ball up the middle. And an experienced secondary for Kentucky. Smith's furniture, appliance, and electronics. You're going to like the look of Smith's. Dave Ragone and the Cardinals trailing 6-0. On third and one, Ragone the keeper. And it looks like they're going to give him the first down. We have a penalty marker. I think we had Earl Jackson tied up with somebody on the other side of the field and a flag down. Looks like Kentucky might have had 12 men on the field. That appears to be the indication. Yeah, it looked Johnson like they caught one guy coming on and off the field. You got the 12th guy on the ball with snap, illegal participation. You know, yeah. last year, Kentucky had a little substitution problem this game and actually played with 10 guys on the field about five plays last year. You can do that, but you can't play with the 12. Hal Mummy and John L. Smith, of course, Mummy in his fourth season. And the defense had 12 players on the field. Five-yard penalty, result of the penalty, first down. So first down, Louisville, a look at how Mummy, as we mentioned, 18 and 17 in his fourth season, two straight winning records, and two straight bowl appearances for the Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky leads it 6-0 on the strength of a Lorenzen. Touchdown pass to Dougie Allen of 34 yards on Kentucky's first possession. And now Ragone from the shotgun. Comes to the near side under pressure, breaks one tackle, still on his feet, and is tripped up at the 37-yard line. Marlon McCree, the fine defensive linebacker, he is an offensive player on defense. Yeah, he really is. He's very aggressive. They're a real big playmaker. Take another look here. This is a little different. We're going, you would think a left-hander would roll to the left. They've actually got him rolling back to the right. A little unorthodox here, probably trying to cross up the defense. And, you know, that's the added dimension. He made something happen out of nothing right and, there. And a good open field tackle by Marlon McCree. And Ragone back to throw, whips one, a completion. It's complete to Dion Branch, the junior college All-American who was red-shirted last year, his first collegiate catch. This is a copyrighted telecast authorized under rights granted to WDRB, WFTE by the University of Louisville Athletic Association. Any use of this telecast without the express written permission is prohibited. Don Russell, Craig Swaback, and our cards on Fox crew from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium with the Cats leading the Cardinals 6-0 in our Jewish Hospital first quarter and Louisville at the Kentucky 30 on a third and one. And they give it to Stallings. I'm not sure. I'm not, I think he's going to be a little bit shy. Yeah, it's going to be close. He, he snuck through there, but I think his knees were already on the ground when he jumped across the line there. Dennis Johnson, the fine defensive end out of Harrodsburg, Kentucky. And let's watch it again. Yeah, here's another look at it. They just straight ahead zone play there, hitting it straight ahead. Good penetration by Johnson there, a nice tackle. And he's going to be short. And, you know, already Coach Smith has been asked about what's he going to do with this new place kicker. Where is he going to go for the field goal or not? Uh, he's right at that line right now, the 30-yard line. Well, they're close enough to measure, and they're going to bring the chains in, but it certainly appeared from the early indication that this is going to be a wee bit shy. And about a length of the ball. So the Cardinals will face a fourth down. Well, how mummy 
He always gambles. John L. Smith, a bit of a riverboat gambler of his own right. And they'll put it in the middle of the field and see what the Cardinals do here, Craig. They've got the offense on the field. Uh, you know, with your mobile quarterback, it wouldn't be surprising to see the ball in his hand on the corner somewhere, somewhere here. So the crowd will come to its feet on the first quarter, third, or make it fourth and one play. Fourth and, well, several inches. And everybody in tight as Ragone brings them to the line of scrimmage. And on the option, Ragone pitches it back. And it's not going to be a first down. Tony Stallings pushed out of bounds. Nice play by Chris Gayton and Anthony Wajda. Particularly the free safety Wajda out of Louisville Trinity, an all-conference performer, and he made an all-conference play there. Yeah, he really did. Free safety in the middle of the field. His job on the option is a run to the pitch, man. Great job by him. You're going to see we're going to take it down the line of scrimmage. I thought he might could have ducked up there, pitched it. Stallings breaks the first half, but there's a secondary guys right there to make the play, and I'll tell you what, that's big on fourth down against an option that they hadn't seen the last couple years from Louisville. So the Kentucky defense able to hold Louisville from the first down and the Wildcat offense that just stormed it down the field in its first possession takes over on downs on the Kentucky 32. And Lorenzen from the shotgun. And he's going to hand it off, though, to Penner. Artus Penner, 5'11", 211-pound sophomore, knocked down by Curry Burns and Anthony Floyd. Well, we never did finish the starting lineups for Kentucky or the defense for Louisville because of all the uh, quick action. And now the Smith's Furniture, Louisville defense. You see Sexton, Donovan Arp, lucky to even be playing. Derek Kennedy coming back from an injured uh, season last year. And good set of young linebackers, except for the senior. Of course, uh, Harris leading the way in the Cardinals secondary. Lorenzen, plenty of time. Now he flushes out of the pocket, going to throw a bullet, and it's caught at the Louisville 46-yard line by Dougie Allen, number 88, the junior out of Lexington Dunbar, and a Wildcat first down. You know, you've heard all the talk about Lorenzen and his size and everything, but I'll tell you what, he's got a gun for a left arm. That ball was on a rope. Once again, Louisville secondary doing a good job right there, losing contain Josiah there. Once he gets outside, the receiver's going to break open and zoom. Man, he stuck that on a rope out there. Well, John L. Smith actually used a throwing machine in practice to try to simulate the hard ball that Lorenzen throws because if you're a defensive guy, you got to catch it too, right? Yeah, it's no, not fun. That's like catching Browning Nagel's ball. Neil Brown, number seven, goes in motion for Kentucky, and I think we had a little yeah, early yeah. movement up front. It might have been Derek Homer, the senior out of Fort Knox. One of the captains that really had a disappointing year did Homer a year ago, and Prior to Prior this, this false start, false start offense, offense. five-yard five penalty remains first down. Well, that says it all, but Homer, I think, expecting to have a big senior year. He's a 12th in career UK rushing, so you know how Mummy needs something from Derek Homer this year. Yeah, he really does. Derek Homer's had an up-and-down career. All the talent in the world has shown real signs of being great, then kind of disappears for a little while. So Lorenzen in the Wildcats on a first and ten. Ball resting just shy of the 50-yard line after that penalty. Lorenzen flips it out to the near side. A completion to number four, Chad Scott. And Scott picks up some pretty good yardage. To number four, Chad Scott. Scott is a 5'10", 175 freshman from Plant City, Florida. And how Mummy will get a lot of receivers in for this guy, Lorenzen. Yeah, just a little quick dump there. Got him in the open field, and, you know, Louisville missing a lot of tackles early right now. You can tell it's the first game right now. They're not real crisp tackling. And that is a true freshman, is Chad Scott. Second and six Wildcats, eight minutes to go in our Jewish Hospital first quarter in Kentucky on the strength of a Lorenzen, Lorenzen to Dougie Allen touchdown pass on the first UK possession. This one... He was down when he caught it. Yep. So that was the ground. Dougie Allen raced it into the end zone, but the officials right there and said the ball bounced. 
Well, I guess that shows how hard Lorenzen throws it. If he bounces it and it's that tough to see, you know that ball's got some zip on it. Y'all tell he threw it right through the coverage. The safety was rolling that way and just couldn't get there because the ball was gone so quick. You know, if it's a split second slower, he's going to pick that ball off. Here's another look at it here. Lorenzen just throwing the quick out. Helmet in the way, but you can see the tip of the ball down on the ground. So it's third and six for Kentucky as Lorenzen barking out signals out of the shotgun this time. Trips to the near side. Lorenzen on a draw play. And the big guy is pulled down from behind, but not before he picks up the first down. Knocked down by Curry Burns and Rashad Holman. I'll tell you what, you put a flak jacket on this kid, it's like tackling a bear. Yeah, you've just got a quarterback draw here. That shows the confidence Coach Mummy's got in his freshman quarterback here. First third down situation. Nice five-yard run there. And I'll tell you, he's a load to bring down. He looks like a running back. Not only is Lorenzen the leading passer in this game for Kentucky, he's the leading rusher as well. So the catch up 6-0 as they move it down to the Cardinal 34-yard line in our Jewish Hospital first quarter. From the shotgun again, Lorenzen. A lot of time this time, plenty of time. Double pumps, now throws again, complete touchdown to Derek Smith. The first collegiate touchdown for a sophomore Derek Smith out of Fort Thomas Highlands, and he got it from a former Fort Thomas Highlands star, Jared Lorenzen. Yeah, good look at it. He's got all day long. You know, he talked four, five, six seconds. Eventually, a guy breaks free, but great pass, good catch by Smith, and, you know, the high school connection there for the touchdown. And the extra point is on the way, and the Cats get their 13th point. So Derek Smith, the sophomore, He's replacing All-American James Whalen, having a good first quarter. The Cards and the Cats, and it's all Wildcats. We'll be right back. John's Cardinal Stadium, the Kentucky Wildcats out to a 13 to nothing first quarter lead. And our Papa John's game day special here at the Pizza Palace today. Uh, large thin crust pizza, three toppings, only $9.99. Call the Louisville area Papa John's closest to you to get a three topping pizza for only $9.99. And we are at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. John L. Smith uh, has to be a wee bit concerned right now. His defense has not played well in the first two Kentucky possessions. Yeah, they really haven't. And, you know, he came into this game very excited about the progress they had made defensively. And so far, you know, preseason they look good, but uh, got to be very disappointed. Right now you just got to try to regroup, get together again, and, and go out there and make something happen on offense. Our cross Pontiac GMC Jeep scoring drive. You see the number six plays 68 yards. John Drewboy is a new member of the cross team. Stop by and say hello to him. And also John Saylor, 10 years experience. Your certified sales Jeep specialist at Cross Watershed Expressway and Newburgh Road. And it looks like Antonio Roundtree is standing back deep as the deep man for the Cardinals instead of Zeke Parker. Now, whether something's wrong with Zeke or not, we don't know. As Clint Ruth ready to kick it away and does. And it is going to be round three to take it at the nine. And is knocked down at the 21-yard line. Boy, you talk about downfield play, Jed Bassett. Six foot, 196 pound sophomore. Boy, did he mess that play up from the beginning. That's special teams at its best. Yeah, he really did. He ran right through two blockers there and, and got Roundtree down. Not sure if Zeke Parker's hurt or if they just went with the substitution there. I still see Zeke on the sidelines right now. And that name might be familiar for Kentucky's fans. That is the son of recruiting coordinator Claude Bassett. So I'm sure dad is proud of son on that last play. Cardinals trail 13 to nothing. And Ragon on the option is going to keep it himself. He gets a couple of tough yards. And now Louisville faces the, the situation, Craig, which I'm sure even though the Cardinals don't in years past have not had any trouble scoring, is having to play from behind early. Yeah, you really don't want to do that with the rookie quarterback having the pressure now, not only being your first start, 
running a little different offense, but now you're 13 points down, so you feel like you really have to make something happen. That's when you start pushing and, and turnovers happen. Just under six and a half min minutes remaining in our Jewish Hospital first quarter. And Ragone's first pass. It's complete. To Tony Stallings out of the backfield, but it's not going to pick up the first down. Matter of fact, picked up a yard or two. Patrick Wiggins, Chris Gayton, both there for Kentucky defensively. Wiggins, a junior out of Sewanee, Georgia, actually transferred from Cumberland College. Take, take another look at it here. Dumps the ball out here to Stallings. Kentucky right now defensively sure looks athletic for making sharp tackles. I know they talk a lot about Coach Mummy not scrimmaging, but right now they're not missing any tackles. I was going to say they look fresh and certainly have been all around the ball here in the first quarter. And the blitz is on. The Cardinals pick it up. That flushes Ragone out of the pocket. Flag on the play as Ragone is pulled down. Looks like he has the first down yardage. Anthony Watchda pulls him down from behind, but We'll have to check out the flag. It was Ryan Murphy on the blitz, and Tony Stallings, 27, did a great job of picking up that blitz. Yeah, he really Watch did. it here. We're going right here. Stallings right here, going to come down and pick up Murphy right there. Great shot by him. That gives the time for Ragone to get outside. You know, that's one of the questions about the new running backs. Can they take the job on the blitz? They picked it up nicely that time, and they're talking to the... Louisville captain, so it looks like it's going to be against Louis, Kentucky. On the defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic, first step. Craig, I know it's obviously very early in a 537 in the Jewish Hospital first quarter, but I think it's really important for Ragone and the Cardinal offense to get the thing down the field here and get on the board. Yeah, they really need to accomplish two things here. They need to go down the field, get some points on the board, and they've got to give the defense a chance to catch their breath, regroup, and get back into the game. Because quite honestly, the defense for the Cardinals in this first quarter, quite porous in the first two possessions for Kentucky. They scored with a lot of ease. Yeah, they've, they've got more points on the board now than they did well into the game last year. Here's a draw play. They give it off to 32. That's Chris Lester. He is a junior college transfer, knocked down by Marlon McCree. Lester, his brother, former EKU and NFL star Tim Lester, and had another brother, Fred, that played in the National Football League. Only two weeks into two a days, so he's only had a couple of weeks of practice, so. Look for Lester to get the carry, but I think he's going to be the man before it's all said yeah, and done. Yeah, the coaches are real high on him. It takes a few weeks to get into the system, but they're real pleased with him coming in in shape and the ability to, to get done at the Division One level what he needs to. Ragone barking out instructions out of the shotgun, and he gives it to Lester again, and Lester fights and looks like he has the first down. Of course, last year, Craig, I think we all forget not only last year and a year before, that number 32 was won by Frank Moreau. And prior to that, Collins, Leroy Collins, did an outstanding job. Back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushers. Yeah, maybe that goes with the position. But right there is a nice little burst of speed. The guy's got some size, puts his head down, finishes the run off. they got to be pleased with the first couple of plays that, that he's been able to give them. Maybe it's something with the number. I think <laughs> maybe 32 just goes with, you know, whoever's making yards back there. Eighth first down total in the game. And Kentucky leading 13-0. Don Russell, Greg Swaback, our cards on Fox Crew. Glad to have you along live from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Whether you're a card or a cat fan, glad you're watching tonight. Here's Lester again. He turns the corner, and Lester has another Cardinal first down. Watch that the safety comes up. I tell you what, 32 kind of has that little prance, doesn't he? He does, and I'll tell you what, when he gets going straight downfield, Wilder just all he could do there was go hang on to him and finish it off. You're going to see a nice little counter trap here. Bring it to the outside. Both guys pulling. Good job of blocking by the inside lineman there. Now, he's got some speed for a big guy. Once he got his shoulders turned up, he knew how to finish the runoff. And our Pizza Hut delivery, like to welcome the Kentuckiana area Pizza Hut stores to the Cards on Fox. Special thanks to Jeff Reitz and Pizza Hut being in the Cards on Fox this year. Lester has that little swagger, doesn't he? Yeah, all the great ones do, and you can tell right away he's got it. And he stays in as the lone setback. In motion is Dion Branch. Ragone across the middle, complete the branch at the 15, branch to the 10, touchdown Louisville!
Dave Rigaud gets his first collegiate touchdown pass here to the Juco Dion Branch. Yeah, slam pattern right there, hits him, throws it on the rope to him, and Dion knew what to do with it once he caught it. We've been hearing about him now for a year and a half, and he really showed some great acceleration there. Here's the extra point effort on the way, and it is good by Talachka. 13-7, Dion Branch, the Juco, gets his first Division I touchdown, and we've got a good one going now in the first quarter at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Hospital first quarter at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, a sellout for the Cards and the Cats. Kentucky leads it. Don't forget, every Saturday the Cardinals play this year, you'll have a chance to tailgate out in the green lot with some great live entertainment. We'll have bands, giveaways, special thanks to Budweiser and Jack Daniels at our Fox 41 tailgate blowouts. Come visit us before every Cardinal home game. Here's the kick, it's deep and fumbled and picked up by the up man Shanklin. Now he's trying to look for somewhere to go and is pushed out of bounds at about the 16. Joss Minkins on the coverage for the Cardinals and our Cross Pontiac GMC Jeep scoring drive. Seven plays, 79 yards. That touchdown pass covered 33 to Branch from Ragon. And don't forget, stop by and see all the fine folks across Pontiac, they have some 2,000 Pontiac closeout with special Pontiac rebates. Ask them about it at Waterston Expressway and Newburgh Road. You know, Don, I'd look for Louisville to get a little more aggressive now defensively. Michael Brown, we haven't heard his name yet. See the crunch zone getting fired up down there, but they're going to have to turn it up a little bit with their pressure. And Jared Lorenzen had to come in and communicate with his offensive line. We've already had four plays from scrimmage of 30 yards or more in this one. And this pass is complete. Out to Leonard Burris. And he's knocked down by Jeremy Collins, our Hamilton printing scoreboard. Louisville's award-winning Hamilton printing. Number one, Nebraska rolls on over San Jose State. Alabama upset by UCLA out on the West Coast. Michigan, no trouble with Bowling Green. And Florida and Ball State, that's in the second quarter. More of our scores on our Hamilton printing scoreboard. Gain of two, second and eight, Lorenzo to throw, flips this one out to the near side. The 19, Gary Hughes, a junior out of Louisville St. X, a walk-on. So a local product gets the reception and will set up a third down and short for Lorenzen in Kentucky. Are you surprised at all the way Lorenzen's moving around, Greg? Yeah, I really am. Uh, Louisville, this first time they got to him right here, they got him on the ground for the first time. But I'll tell you, he's got some poise and confidence. Right now, he really doesn't look like a freshman out there. Well, the Cardinal defense probably a little bit shell-shocked from the first two possessions, trying to hunker down here defensively on third and three. Nowhere to go, and the Cardinal Crunch Zone appreciates it. A lot of red shirts there. Dwayne White and Donovan Arp, and boy, I tell you what, for Donovan Arp to even be playing is amazing. Yeah, that, that's a truly amazing story right there. Donovan Arp ruptured his Achilles tendon in spring practice, normally a five-month recovery period. They tell me he's 20 pounds heavier and jumped six inches higher in the vertical. And it was all that dedication and the outstanding rehab thanks to Jewish Hospital and Frazier Rehab. Here's Seth Hansen. He was the place kicker two years ago, suffered an injury to his leg, missed all of last year. And Arnold Jackson will be standing back to return the kick at the 36-yard line of Louisville. Interesting here, Louisville left their defense on the field, so they don't even have a punt return. They just put Jackson in the game. Short kick, Jackson watches it bounce, doesn't touch it, backs away from it. It'll come to rest at the 32-yard line, but we have a flag on the play back at the 19-yard line. Let's check out the Pepsi preview board. Of course, volleyball at U of L. I tell you what, Leonard Yellen's team's going to be outstanding, ranked in the top 25. They have action coming up at Cardinal Arena. Tickets available at the gate. That's our Pepsi preview. Follow the Cards Lady Volleyball team at Cardinal Arena. Interesting call here. You've got holding for Kentucky, so John L has a choice here whether to bring him back, make him kick it again, or take it where the ball is. Uh, you see Coach Smith. Holding on the kicking team. 
at the distance to the goal. Repeat. Well, I think you want him to kick because you want to let Arnold Jackson sure do. get a chance to return. He's had only one fair catch, Craig. And you know what? That's been since his freshman season. Can you imagine that? He just wants to make something. That, he wanted that ball really bad there. He thought about it and thought about it and couldn't do it. Louisville's in a good position here. They're keeping their defense on the field just to protect against the fake with all the fakes Kentucky does. But look for Kentucky to kick it here. And Jackson standing at the 50. Jackson's only punt return for a touchdown came against Kentucky in 1997. And Seth Hansen now will back up about five yards deep into the Kentucky end zone. And as I mentioned, he was the place kicker in a fine one two seasons ago. Was both a punter and place kicker in high school in Dallas. And really his first collegiate punting statistics he's always been a place kicker for UK now some confusion as the striped shirts get together this game's kind of settled in a, a little yeah, slow now it, it really is and look we've got a minute left to go in the first quarter Arnold hadn't touched the ball yet so he's itching to get his fingers on the ball make something happen of course Arnold Jackson as we mentioned the top returning receiver in the nation and what a story that Jackson developed Florida's fifth year senior has been in a Louisville Cardinal uniform number 10 Arnold Jackson he now moves to the Kentucky side of the 50 to await the Seth Hansen punt. Cardinals coming after it did not get it and a good good punt by Hansen as Jackson will watch it bounce but it gets a fortuitous kick for the Louisville Cardinals as it goes out of bounds at the 47. Garrett Kennedy almost got a piece of that. So Ragone and the Cardinals will go on offense as Hal Mummy's team hangs on to a 13 to 7 lead here in our Jewish hospital first quarter. Louisville's defense really did what it needed to do there to accomplish. It got them off the field three and out and gave the offense the ball back in great field position. Well, you know, beginning next month, there's only one place where you can see Michael J. Fox in his biggest comedy hit, and that's right here. Look for Spin City six nights a week starting Monday, October 2nd, right here on Fox 41. Well, Don Russell, Craig Swaback, as Louisville goes on the attack offensively as they moved it down the field and got on the board on their last possession. As you hear Ragone barking out some audibles. Hands it off to Lester, and Lester, a couple of tough yards, a penalty marker on the play, would most likely indicate an offensive holding. Looked like holding on Ronnie Jen out here on the outside. New tight end for Louisville. Uh, face no nope. face mask. On Kentucky. Goes the other way, so evidently somebody got a hold of the face gear, either in the offensive line or as Lester. Let's see if we can pick up what happens. It would be on the yeah, left. Yeah, draw play over here. You'll see Stone turn it up, and this is kind of penalty. Yep, Dennis Johnson right there. This guy, Matt Leo. Matt Leo right there, number 41 with the face mask. Unintentional face mask. And you really hate that as a coach. They had the play defended really well and uh, then to have a penalty on top of it. That's our Louisville Technical Institute. Call now for course and registration information. Here's Racone to the near side. Gets the first down for the Cardinals. And he is not shy to run with the ball either. Now they're going with the hurry up offense. He's getting everybody up to the line, Craig. Yeah, he really is. They did, they did it once earlier. They're trying to catch him in substitution problems, moving those tackles in and out. And Kentucky really confused and is forced. Well, it looked like they were going to take a timeout, but don't. Ragone looking for Jackson. And Arnold can't make the grab at the 16-yard line. Step for step was Eric Kelly, the best cover guy at cornerback, the senior out of Panama City, Florida. He's a returning two-year starter, and this one's coming right into your living room. Grab your Pepsi and your Budweiser and enjoy this one. Just off the reach of his hands. Inches, inches. Well, we talk about Arnold Jackson. Ron Cooper actually discovered Arnold Jackson by watching a basketball game in which the 5'8 speedster dunked the ball tomahawk style and said, this guy 
can play some football. Oh, nice move by Chris Lester. Got about three or four yards, but a little nifty move by the 6'2", 220 pounder, Murphy and Eric Kelly, both there for the Wildcats. You know, you talked about a swagger. You can see him, he's got confidence here. Nice athletic move, big guy here, 220 pounds here. Good job defensively by McCree. He turns it up to another six yards for Lester. Again, from ground level, counter trapped a good job by the offensive line, and that's a nice little run there for a guy only two weeks on campus. Of course, Kentucky last year had a minus 10 yards rushing in the game against Louisville. Of course, Lorenzen picked up more yardage than that on his first carry. Kentucky went up 13-0, and Louisville, as we wind down the final seconds of our Jewish half middle first quarter, and Ragone takes a timeout. It's a third down play, and he was confused. And we have a penalty marker as well. Did the flag come first? May not have the timeout. J.C. Jewett Cardinal Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat. Third down. I had to count his fingers there for a moment. One, <laughs> two, three is third down, I think. You see John L. down there talking to the officials. He thinks we're going got the timeout called before they went ahead and ran the play. Well, that's what he was asking for, but asking you shall not receive in this case. And it's going to be third and 11 for the Cardinals, and that changes things considerably. And that will be the final play of our Jewish Hospital first quarter. Jewish Hospital, the official hospital and rehab company of the Louisville Cardinals. Dave Ragone has settled down his opposite number. Jared Lorenzen got 13 quick points on the board for the Wildcats. But Ragone and the Cardinals coming back. That's the end of the Jewish Hospital first quarter. We'll be right back. Welcome back live to Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The Cards on Fox presentation of the Kentucky Wildcats and the Louisville Cardinals. 13-7. Kentucky with the advantage. Kentucky led it 13 to nothing as Louisville now faces a third down and 11 as we get ready to start our second quarter. And our second quarter is brought to you by your good friends at your local Ford dealers. And our special thanks to Ford for their support this year and our Ford Beat the Pro competition to help Dare to Care. Speaking of help, Dave Ragone needed help that time because Chris Demery, junior from right here in Louisville Male High School, makes the stop. And that's a big sack for the outstanding junior from Louisville Male. Our first quarter stats, Craig. Uh, Kentucky with the advantage. I guess no huge surprise there. Yeah, not at all with the score being what it was. A lot of yards for the first, first quarter there, 148 yards, 47 rushing yards for Kentucky. Most of that coming with Lorenzen. And uh, both quarterbacks so far playing pretty good. Chris Savoy to get the kick away. A low kick. Shanklin will watch it bounce. It takes a Kentucky roll and is downed at the 29-yard line. Brian Gaines, number four downfield, to knock it down. A 22-yard punt, not an excellent punt at all by Chris Savory, who enjoyed an outstanding freshman year as a true freshman. And we have a timeout. 14-16 remaining. We're in our Ford second quarter. Glad you joined us for the Cards and the Cats. John L. Smith team trails by six in the second. In quarter, Kentucky leads at 13 to 7. We'd like to talk to you about the UofL Cardware Store over on Shelbyville Road across from Oxmoor Center. And I'm telling you what, if you're a Cardinal fan, you need to call that toll-free number. If you want anything for a Cardinal fan, whether it be inexpensive, a big item, a basketball jersey, football jersey, you name it, all the specialty items at the UofL Cardware Store on Shelbyville Road across from Oxmoor Center. Go in and see those fine folks and get your official UofL apparel. Here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, first and 10 for Kentucky as Lorenzen out of the shotgun this time and gonna wing it up. Looking downfield, Flower going to play. Jeremy Collins, I think, is gonna get called for a holding. Yeah, they had two guys covering the tight end there. Little hold by Jeremy Collins. Great play by the safety. Going to be negated by the penalty. Well, that was the reason that Derek Smith, who has already caught his first collegiate touchdown pass, 
could not get open because number 12 Curry Burns, a sophomore from Miami. Holy, 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 and an automatic first down. Take another look at it here. They're going to run the little flag pattern out here to the outside, one of their favorite patterns to the tight end. You're going to have a little hold right here in the middle of the field from behind there. Hard to really see it there. He must have had his jersey from behind when he was trailing him there. And that was our Louisville Technical Institute Telestrator. Don't forget courses and registration information available now at Louisville Tech. Thirteen seven. And off the pinner. Our two spinner on the carry runs into Rashad Harris, the senior from Huntsville, Alabama. Four year starter. Matter of fact, Craig, he probably remembers Kentucky. He was 17 years old when he started as a true freshman, so I'm sure he knows the uh, excitement and generation of uh, enthusiasm out of this game. Yeah, you're not kidding. 17 years old, true freshman playing in the atmosphere he did by now. It's old hat for him and been somewhat quiet here earlier, him and Michael Brown both. That'll make you a sophomore in a week <laughs> after a situation like that. Kentucky on second, we'll call it a long eight, and Lorenzen, who's enjoyed a great first quarter, gonna wing it up again, and he throws too long, intended downfield for 25, Quentin McCord. Well, we'd like to welcome a new sponsor to the Cards on Fox this year. We have Bar S Food Company, and thanks to them, they're going to be giving points to the Dare to Care Food Bank. So the Cardinals have seven points at this point, a total of 21 that will be donated to the Dare to Care Food Bank, Bar S Foods. Jumbo Franks and Smoked Sausages at, available at your Kroger store. Only the best is branded Bar S. I'd like to welcome Rick Kilgore, the district manager, and Bar S Food Company to the Cards on Fox. And they'll be helping Dare to Care look for their products in any area Kroger store. 13-7 on third and eight now as Lorenzen blitz coming from the outside, flips it in the air, and it's caught. Oh, what a great catch by Derek Smith. Over the shoulder catch, Anthony Floyd was there. Craig, a lot of people thought, you know, with Waylon gone and this guy, Derek Smith, he could probably stand right in there. He could be a big factor in this game, and he has been he already. He has been already with the touchdown catch here, third and long. Louisville brought pressure, had man-to-man -man coverage, and nice throw by Lorenzo. Oh, you know, that you about the strength of his oh. arm. He dropped that one in right over the top, and, and a great catch, great throw. What a touch by Jared Lorenzen. Might be a big man, but he had the touch of a jeweler there on that little flip pass, and you can tell already 128 yards on seven out of nine. And Lorenzen going to put it up top again. Now he's going to run with it, looking for a block, and he's knocked down at the 27-yard line. Louisville brought the pressure again that time, and Kentucky's offensive line is doing a nice job of keeping him clean. As he hadn't been knocked down in the pocket that he took off running there and again making things happen. Well, he lumbers a bit when he runs, obviously. He's quick of foot, though. Quick of foot, he is mobile to an extent right there. The rush is right there. They just miss him in here a little bit. You see him lumbering, I guess you could say there. One thing you got to look for is how tired does he get in this game? He's been doing a lot of moving around so far. Uh, he shows a lot of good intelligence, good instinct here in this first half in this rivalry. This is his first collegiate game. And now we have whistles, and we had some movement up front. You know, Kentucky in that offensive line has a true freshman, Antonio Hall, starting. That's who moved that time, number 73. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. And a good look at the true freshman, 6'5", 295 out of Canton, Ohio. Had an ankle sprain on August 17th. But he's a high school All-American, and he must be pretty good after a few weeks of practice, and he's in there as a yeah. starter. Yeah, you got to be real impressive to come in and start an offensive tackle. And by starting him, they moved two other guys on the offensive line to new positions. Motion this time by number 81 for the Wildcats. That's Jimmy Robinson. And Chase Hart gets into the act this time. The sophomore out of Danville, Kentucky, played for his dad, Sam, former quarterback, and he gets the reception, and the Kentucky Wildcats are knocking on the door again inside the 10. Yep, little crossing right here. Lorenzen, a little blown coverage here. He had one linebacker running left, receiver running right, and 
Nice catch and run there, Floyd going over to make the tackle. So just like with James Whalen, Hal Mummy making the tight end an integral part of this Kentucky offense. As Mummy looks on, as the Cats already lead it 13 to 7. Motion by Barres. Lorenzen wants to throw, look, look, fires, and a bullet in and out of the hands of Burris. Or excuse me, Anthony Kelly. They have two number ones, they have two number twos, two number, two number threes, and two number fours, and that's a bunch of baloney. That should never be permitted, but it's done a lot in college football. Yeah, it really is. You really wear is. a number, it's your number, or it's somebody else's number. It's tough for substitution picking guys out, but you know, they're just rotating receivers every play. Two or three new guys in, no running back in the game, some play two the next. But a lot of teams do it. It's not a slap in Kentucky by any stretch, it just makes it Especially if the names aren't on the back, you're out of luck. And how do you know which one is which one? Second and nine. Lorenzen fires, and it's complete to Derek Smith again, and he comes up just a little bit shy of the score. Jeremy Freitag, the junior college player out of Sacramento, Sacramento Center College, make the stop, but I tell you, Derek Smith having a big first half thanks to Jared Just Lorenzen. Keep, same play again. They're running a little crossing route across the middle here and getting one-on-one -on -one coverage with the linebackers and Lorenzen, just like Bonner last year, looking to the tight end for the short throws. So Kentucky looking for its third score here in the first half with 10.45 remaining. Nolan Devon, the junior center. Lorenzen, now he wants to run. And he'll get the Kentucky touchdown. And the Cats will go for two. Jared Lorenzen has thrown for two touchdowns, and now he's run for one. Yeah, stellar start to start his career off. I'll tell you, couldn't script it any better for him. And Louisville's defense, they've got to be concerned now. They got back in the game and they marched down the field again, completed a couple of nice third down plays. And once again, decent coverage there. He tucks it down and runs. They're going to have to have better play out of the defensive line. Uh, I guess it's safe to say at this point, the visions of Dusty Bomber fading fast. Is this guy Lorenzen? Well, how Mummy said he could get the job done, and you can see the confidence in this redshirt freshman Lorenzen. Cats going for two. It's tipped away and intercepted and then dropped, and the two-point conversion fails. So the Cats have missed twice on conversions, Curry Burns and Anthony Floyd on the coverage. 10.37 remaining. We're in our fourth second quarter at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Cats lead it as Lorenzen. He can run it, and he gets the touchdown. Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, a beautiful night in our Ford second quarter. Check out our Powertail game summary. Powertail, we're on that, thanks to Mike Patterson and company. Some key elements, Greg, in our Powertail game summary here. Four plays of 30 yards or more so far. It's exciting. The scoring drive take about a minute, two minutes, three minutes. Lorenzo, 9 of 12 for 159 yards, two touchdowns. Ragone's been okay when he has thrown the ball. They just haven't had that many opportunities. But it has been the Jared Lorenzen show here in the first half. As the Cats have it teed up, Brandon Sanders, number 90, to kick it off for Kentucky. I don't know if Zeke Parker's back in there this time. Last time it was Roundtree. We don't know if Parker is injured or... Looks like Parker's back there. Yep, there Looks you like see Zeke. And this one really deep. Nobody going to get a chance to return this one. As a good kick that time by the Wildcats, Brandon Sanders. We have a penalty marker on the play. And it could be a holding call against the Cardinals. And if there's a holding on a ball that was kicked into the end zone, that drives your special teams coach nuts. Yeah, it really does. That was 35 yards away from where the ball was, real late in the play. As they still discuss the options. Our cross Pontiac GMC Jeep scoring drive, eight plays, 71 yards, Lorenzen, takes it the final yard. Don't forget to stop by Cross Pontiac. 
for the best in used cars. It's all family owned dealership, 75 years of doing business the right way. Watterson Expressway and Newburgh Road, a five star service department at Cross, our Cross Pontiac GMC Jeep scoring drive. Well, the Cardinal breakdown in plays so far, Craig. 12 runs oh, wait, and four wait. passes. On the receiving team, that penalty is to decline. First down, First down, down, down. 20 yard line. I hope you'll join us for our Kroger Halftime Report. Athletic Director Tom Jurich will be with us to talk about the recent dedication of Cardinal Park. We'll have stats and highlights and all that and more on our Kroger Halftime Report on a beautiful night here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Sellout crowd. Don Russell, Craig Swaback, glad you joined us. Glad to have producer director Lou Renoni and the rest of the team back in place here in our forward second quarter. Here's the give. Big hole up the middle, 27, Tony Stallings. Stallings still on his feet and fights his way to the 43. Good effort by Stallings that time. Nick Selly was the guy that finally knocked him down, but good running that time by the junior from Bedford, Ohio. Yeah, it really was. He exploded out of there. Big hole by the offensive line, and he knew what to do when he got in the open field. You know, with the two young tackles inside for Kentucky, Louisville's looking to run the ball more inside. So far, they're having success doing it. And our Chrysler Plymouth drive of the game, your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer will donate $100 to the Dare to Care Food Bank to help feed the hungry in the Kentuckiana area. Our Chrysler Plymouth drive of the game. And a good run by Stallings. Here's a little fit pass out to Arnold Jackson. Flag from the backfield, Jackson. After he gets close to first down yard, he steps out of bounds, but we might have a crackback block yeah. against the Cardinals here. Something with the receivers after you get two receivers blocking inside on linebackers and safety, running a little wide screen there, but I'll tell you what, Louisville's got to find a way to get the ball to Arnold Jackson. He makes things happen. And that's what it is. That's one of the rule changes involved this year, too, to protect against some really dangerous knee injuries that there's a certain zone now where this crackback block is not permitted. Yeah, a lot of that comes from when you want line the receivers up wide, bring them back inside and swing that third receiver out. As nightfall surrounds Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. You know, early in the game so far, penalty starting to hurt Louisville. On the offense, 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. Well, Dave Ragone's going to have to start with a first, uh, make it about, what, 23 yards, 22, they say. And uh, the Cardinals have just been playing out of a hole since the beginning from Kentucky's uh, offensive burst in the first quarter. Yeah, a little shell shock, and like you say, then the offense has that pressure now, thinking they've got to score every time they get the ball. Here's to give the Stallings again, and Stallings running north and south and gets about 12 of those yards right back. Derek Tatum. Sophomore from Shaker Heights, Ohio, brings down to number 27, Tony Stallings. I think Tony saw Chris Lester get a couple of rushes, and he said, hey, give me the ball again. That's right. Good look at it from ground level here. Good call, Scott Lenhan. Everyone expecting pass first and 23, and Stallings gets a nice little opening on the draw play. Straight up field. The good thing about having two backs, competition. You know, those guys start competing now, and it's valuable every time you get a carry. So second and nine, and the Cardinals are going to have five wide receivers. Ragone out of the shotgun with no backs. They flip it out to Jackson. Oh, and he is belted immediately by the guy that we just mentioned, Derek Tatum and Arnold Jackson, yet to get up. I mean, he was out there all by himself, and Arnold at 5'8", 170, and Tatum talking a little smack right now, but he just crunched Arnold Jackson. You hate to see that. They ran the same little screen out there, and the safety didn't get, or the corner didn't get blocked on, and he stuck the helmet right in the ribs. Well, while they check on Arnold Jackson, that was a Jack Tatum kind of hit. Yeah, it really right, was. Right, Jeff, our spotter. Women's soccer, U of L and Ohio University, coming up on the 8th of September at 5 p.m. at the all-new Cardinal Park. Free admission. Check out the women's soccer team, U of L, Ohio University. That's on our Pepsi preview board. Let's watch this one more time as Arnold Jackson still is yet to get up from the Papa John's Cardinal Stadium turf. Oh, boy, that hurts. You could hear it all the way up here, and you could see it coming. Uh, 
Another wide receiver missed the block there, and that hurts the helmet right in the ribs right there. And that's a sign Louisville fans don't want to see is A.J. laying on the ground hurt. Now you see Jackson, the senior out of Jacksonville, Florida, as we mentioned, needed 62 catches to set a new NCAA receiving record all time. Last year had a conference record and school record, 101 receptions, and uh, Tatum still patting himself on the back a little bit, but a completely clean play there. And you know what you do if you're an offensive guy and you want to get back? When you get a chance, you knock that guy right on his butt. But Tatum with a fine defensive play for Kentucky, and Jackson coming off the field with the help of some of the training staff. You see Dwayne Triolo, the trainer there. But Arnold appears to be okay. Dr. Raymond Shea as well in your picture. We're under the nine minute mark. And Ragone back to throw. Now he has a lot of room to run. 50, 45, 43 yard line. First down Louisville. Chris Gayton, the outside linebacker. Hey, he has quite a job replacing all-conference performer Jeff Snedeker, but fine awareness here by Ragone. Yeah, it really is. He's holding in there as long as he can, trying to find something to throw to. Once he sees there's no one open, he takes off running. Good play getting him down, but there's the added dimension that both quarterbacks add to their scores. And this guy knows how to run because you'll actually see him switch the ball to the outside arm as you look at the first downs, completely even at eight. Arnold Jackson back in, gets the ball on a reverse. So Arnold breaks one tackle and just fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage, actually. And Chris Dimery on the stop. Well, Arnold shows how tough he is for a little guy. Gets the wind knocked out of him, and now he's going to have a lot of white and blue all over him here. I'll tell you, he's, he's poetry in motion. One, two, three, four guys missing before they finally get him down. Nice tackle there. But Arnold's a tough guy, I'll tell you what. Goes off the field after getting hit right in the ribs there. Next play, he's back on and gets the ball. We've got our buddy Robbie Valentine in the booth. We're going to chat with him a little bit later in this quarter about some of the things he's been doing in the community in the Grambling game next week. Here's Ragone scrambling, looking for yardage and picks up three, maybe four yards. Knocked down by Murphy and Willie Gary. The difference between Ragone and Lorenzen is obviously Lorenzen, he'll challenge you and just try to run over you. Yeah, Ragone he looks like he's looking for a spot to run. He's looking for a spot, and then they've coached him too when he does get out like that. He's a pocket passer. They want him to get on the ground a little bit, not not make himself susceptible to a lot of hits. And you know, this guy, Craig, really has spent five of the last six years on the bench because at St. Ignatius, outside of Cleveland, you didn't play till you were a senior. Senior, yeah. I mean, and takes he, him to the semifinals of the state and a great job, but you only played one year there. Ragone throws a strike this time. Good enough for the Cardinal first down to number nine, Dion Branch, the junior. Had a great junior college career, caught for over a thousand yards of receptions and nine touchdowns. Already has a touchdown in this game. Patrick Wiggins, the strong side safety on the stop for the Cats. Both quarterbacks are on the ball on target. When they've got open receivers, they're delivering the ball to them. Well, Ragone and the Cardinals trail by only 12 because of the two missed conversions. Lester back in as the lone setback, and he gets the carry. Lester, big hole down to the 22-yard line. Louisville, if they can continue to have success running the ball, could wear Kentucky down defensively a little bit. Yeah, we talked about earlier those young defensive tackles. It looks like Scott Lenahan's plan is to continue. Don't get out of your game plan. Keep running the ball. Keep running the ball. You've got two running backs, and inside you've got a little advantage with your inside players on the offensive line. Yeah, that gives Dennis Johnson, he's really got to cover defensive end and defensive tackle here early in the game, and the same for Leo on the other side. Yeah, you really do when you've got inexperience next year. You try to do a little more than you normally do. The tenth play of this drive for the Cardinals as we wind it down to the six-minute mark in our forward second quarter. Ragone, good protection again. Fires, complete to Jackson. First down, Cardinals at the nine. Knocked down by Derek Tatum. Ragone beginning to get a little bit of the feel of the game right now. Yeah, yeah one of the things everyone talked about, you know, since he is such a good runner, would he have happy feet and take off and run too early? This time he sat back in the pocket, thought about running. He's glued in right here on the receiver. Says, now I can run, but nope. He pops open, bides a little time there. 
puts it on target there. And Jackson makes the reception. You know, Arnold Jackson has caught five passes or more in 24 straight games. Yeah, you weren't going to shut him out, that's for sure. And this time, Lester right next to Ragon. And we have a whistle and a flag. Could be a procedure against the Cardinals here. Well, if you joined us a little bit late, most likely you didn't if you're going to watch this one. False start. Offense. Five-year penalty. Repeating. First down. Probably watched it from the beginning, but Kentucky got out to a 13 to nothing lead as Lorenzen threw for two touchdowns. Ragone came back with a touchdown strike to Dion Branch. That's what Ragone has done in this game, seven out of eight. And then the Cardinals trail it 19 to seven. And Chris Gate on the coverage that time for Kentucky. And Kentucky's defense, they feel pretty good about this unit. They think they can give Ragone a lot of different looks and put a lot of pressure on him yeah, tonight. Yeah, another look at it. Twisting inside here at 33. Gaten gets a beat on him there. And I'll tell you, Gaten, he's a player. He can run. He chased Ragon down a few plays ago. And if you're from a free safety position, that's what you would see. And no place for Ragon to go. It took a real shot from the junior from Montreal, Quebec, who, by the way, Gaten was the valedictorian of his class. So he has some football knowledge and off the field knowledge as well. Ragon fumbled it. Kentucky recovers the fumble. Well, that's the thing you can't make is those kind of mistakes. Otis Grigsby, number 18, the defensive end, was the guy that actually slapped it loose, and Matt Leo recovers it for the Cats. Great job, Kentucky, bringing the pressure again there. He got a little careless with the ball after taking that hit on the last play. Take a look at it here. He's got it in the left hand. Nice job stripping it out, and there it is. Got to protect the ball. Four second quarter, 4-4-3 four, four, remaining in it. Kentucky comes up with the game's first turnover. 19-7, Cats. Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, 19-7. The Cardinals with the advantage are trailing Kentucky. We'd like to welcome our good friend Robbie Valentine. Robbie, of course, will be my color, color analyst again in uh, Cardinal basketball. Robbie, good to see you. How you doing, Don? Everything's going good. We're going to have you with us through uh, the remainder of this second quarter and talk about some of the things you have going on in the school systems that's going to involve uh, uh, some young people coming to the Grambling game next week, and we'll do that after Kentucky has his first and 10 play from the Wildcat 33-yard line after the fumble recovery. Lorenzen to throw again. Again, the tight end, Derek Smith, makes the catch and picks up about five or six yards. Robbie, I know you're so involved in the community. Why don't you tell the viewers that don't know a lot of the different programs you're doing, particularly in the Jefferson County and surrounding school systems? Well, Don, a few years back, we started an educational program in four middle schools. Now we're in all 23 in Jefferson County. Now we are also have uh, 25 elementary schools, so we're trying to do our best to, to work with the young people, keep them off the streets, keep them involved, but most importantly, make sure they keep up with their studies. And that is the important thing, Robbie. Second down and four after a gain of six as Kentucky to the near side, as this time it goes in the hands number of number 40, r Pinner on the play. And Robbie, I know you have some uh, young people that you work with and I'm sure are watching this game tonight, whether they're a card or a cat fan, and they're going to have a chance, thanks to U of L, to be special guests here next week. Tell us about well, that. Well, we have a lot of young kids that's been in school now for about two weeks, and we, we set a goal for the kids that if they can start out the two or three weeks on a good note, that we'll have an opportunity to, to fill up the stands full of young people because of the hard work they're doing academically. And that'll be at the Grambling game next week as the Cardinals have their second consecutive home game. 340 remaining in our fourth second quarter. Lorenzen now checking off at the line. And we have flags everywhere. Of course, uh, those young people, Robbie, what an example for them to have to be able to come to a facility like this. What do they learn from coming to Cardinal football? And I know UofL really helped you out with this. Well, first off, I really believe that the, because of the kids working hard, it gives them an opportunity to say, look, look what we earned 
by putting in the hard work in school, but also for the parents. It gives them a chance to say, my child had that opportunity too. And Robbie, I know you're very proud of all your young people and a special thanks to Tom Jurich and Brad Barber for helping you out, I know, with the tickets for these young people next week. Well, we can't wait. It's going to be fun having the opportunity to come here and see the University of Louisville play and also for the kids. All right, Robbie, good to see you, man. We'll look for you in hoops. Thanks. Robbie Valentine, former Cardinal star, and a member of the Cards on Fox basketball telecast team as Kentucky fighting here in the final three minutes and eight seconds of our forward second quarter. Artus Pinner again, 5'11", 211 a pound sophomore. Played in four of the last five games last year, did number 40 out of Hopkinsville. A tough yards guy. And he, along with Derek Homer, looks like those will be the two. And Kendrick Shanklin that will be handling the running game for Kentucky this year. Second down and 11 for the Cats. Let's see if Lorenzen, you know, how Mummy would love nothing better than to put a little more space between the two before the intermission. And once again, penalty markers everywhere. Yeah, getting a little sloppy down there. Louisville's changed up a little bit. They're bringing the blitz. They're not bringing it. They're changing their alignment there. And whether the cadence off, I don't know. They've had a couple false starts here. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty remains. Second down. Let's check out our Hamilton printing scoreboard. Louisville's award-winning Hamilton printing. You see Purdue all over Central Michigan. That's the final. 14th ranked Boilermakers. Ohio State no trouble with Fresno State. Ole Miss over Tulane. Tulane gave uh, the Rebs a game for a while, and Notre Dame defeats Texas A&M. Our Hamilton printing scoreboard here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Lorenzen this time surrounded by backs and receivers. The lefty pump fakes, now he fires, and it's caught by Brad Pyatt, the sophomore from Arvadia, Colorado. Gets his first catch of the year, Jeremy Collins right there. And it looks like, Craig, right now, Louisville must be doing a few more things defensively because Lorenzen looks like he's looking around a lot. Yeah, it really is what they're doing there. They're rushing three guys and they're what they call spying a fourth lineman. He's just shadowing Lorenzen about two yards off the line of scrimmage. So what they're saying is, we'll keep him covered. And if you want to run again, we've got one guy here waiting for him. And it's really changed the look up to him. How Mummy looked like he was thinking about a timeout there, but doesn't take it as the Cats face a third and 15. And now it is going to be a timeout as Mummy decided, hey, we need to talk it over. You could see that uh, he wanted to discuss it with his redshirt freshman quarterback. Well, you know, every weekday, Fox 41 has the perfect way to ward off those early morning blues while you're getting the kids off to school. Have your wake-up coffee with Kevin and Elizabeth and the rest of the gang on Fox in the morning. That's on this Monday and every weekday from 6 to 9 a.m. And you can catch it right here on Fox 41. And again, we'd like to welcome our viewers in Bowling Green on WKNT-TV, Fox Channel 40, NBG. Don Russell, Craig Swaback, Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in our forward second quarter. Cats lead it by 12 as Hal Mummy. Well, he's the head coach and the offensive coordinator. That's yeah. for sure. He's the play caller. Yeah, you can tell looking down in the huddle down there. Mummy's running it. They've got an offensive coordinator, but he's the one calling the plays, and he's the one making some type. He saw something out there Louisville changed and adjusted to, and he wanted to get Lorenzen over and talk about it, get on the same page. Well, you know, he would love nothing better than to give the redshirt freshman a little bit more breathing room at the intermission, and boy, what an impressive first half, really, by both of these quarterbacks. Lorenzen, much more impressive in terms of total yards. He's thrown for two, he's ran for one, he's been responsible, yes, for all three yeah, games. Yeah, he's had all three so far. On third and long, Lorenzen, lots of time, now he fires incomplete. Lorenzen goes down. Devon Thomas finally put some pressure on Lorenzen. And the Cardinals are going to have to do this, Craig, if they hope to win this game. Yeah, they're going to have to. They've jumped back in man coverage there, rushed four guys. Devon Thomas comes off late here. Got to him just in time there, and he threw a rope even though he got hit there. But they're going to have to do that. They're going to have to put him on the ground over and over again, get him out of his comfort level. Jared Lorenzen, you can tell he's full of enthusiasm. He is just one of those rare breed athletes that has skills well beyond his size. And now a punting situation for Seth Hansen. 
little pooch kick. Kentucky doesn't like them to be returned. Arnold Jackson has a chance here, but he's slapped down immediately at the 22-yard line by Mike Byrne, a reserve wide receiver. Now's where we'll really get a chance to see if we're going, how he handles the offense. There's a minute 20 left. They're going to be in the hurry up. Two minute offense here. Generally, when that happens, your quarterback's calling all the plays himself. So be interesting here to see how he handles it. And we'd like to remind you as we check out the Pepsi preview board, the UofL field hockey team will be taking on St. Louis on the 9th of September at 1 p.m. at Cardinal Stadium. That's the KFEC free admission. So check out the field hockey team as UofL meets St. Louis coming up September 9th at 1 p.m. Cardinals have a minute 20 remaining in the half to try to get something done. Ragone running away from pressure and it finally is knocked down. He ran a lot of yards and picked up about two. Willie Gary, number 27, the cornerback, came up to make the hit and again here's the hurry up offense you don't want to make a mistake here though and lay something easy out there for the cats yeah you really don't you can't go three and out and leave a minute on the clock give them the ball back in midfield or make any type of a turnover ragone fires this is complete shy of the first down but not by much Dion branch pulls in his third catch of the game and again the cardinals going without the huddle but now they're going to have to get the first down, Craig, because it's going to be third and one. Yeah, really, again, a little sign there of not playing a whole lot. They lost about five, seven seconds there in between wanting the timeout and getting it called. So John L. Smith takes the timeout here and will call Ragone over to the sideline with 40 seconds remaining in our Ford second quarter. Well, as they talk about that, well, you remember how Fox has changed the way TV covered the NFL? Well, they're about to do it again with America's fastest growing sport. You've never seen auto racing the way you're about to see it when NASCAR comes to Fox, beginning with the prestigious Daytona 500 next February. Don't miss it. NASCAR coming to Fox February 2001. I even know that was a NASCAR fan. Yeah. Dave Ragone. 40 seconds here, Craig. What do you think uh, is in the cards here? They got to do something to get a first down. Wouldn't surprise me here to run some type of draw, something real quick here, get two or three yards here, and then jump back into the two minute offense again. Well, Kentucky quickly got into things offensively, put up 13 unanswered points in just a matter of minutes. And the game's kind of settled into something now, but should have a good second half, but the Cats have a 12-point lead before halftime. Well, Lester gets the carry, not much this time at all, as it looks like Louisville's gonna be content to just let the clock run out now, as Ryan Murphy made the stop. Uh, Kentucky could stop the clock here, but don't they appear to be not doing. to do so. And it's fourth down, and it looks like both coaches are going to be content to go to the locker room at this 19 to 7 score. With the Wildcats with the advantage, as that will be the final play of the first half. Our Ford second quarter has come to an end. John L. Smith has some work to do with his troops as Kentucky got out to a 13-0 lead behind Jared Lorenzen. They have 19 points. That big redshirt freshman has thrown for two and run for one. Don't go away. Our Kroger halftime report coming right at you from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Kroger halftime report. We're glad to have you along from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Our Kroger halftime report with the Wildcats leading the Louisville Cardinals 19 to 7 at the intermission. We're glad to have you along as the Cards and the Cats go out here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Uh, Kentucky obviously got off to a quick start offensively, put 13 unanswered points on the board, but the Cardinals came back to set up the 12-point uh, Kentucky lead at the intermission. Tom Jurich will be our special halftime guest, but first, this word from the University of Louisville. Today's the Wildcats over the Cardinals on our Kroger halftime report. I'm very pleased to welcome 
a guy that probably we just joked about it, Tom Jurich made the best call of all by playing this game at night because it was really hot this afternoon. And Tom, you know, we've talked so much about this series. Once you came to town, you know, it's, it's very unique to have this already done, but you've done a lot of things to build on it with a lot of the other sports, the golf outing this week. You've really made this, uh, along with Larry Ivey, going to make it a week-long event, right? Well, Larry's a great guy to work with, first of all, and I give him a lot of credit. Uh, you know, CM is a class guy, and he was followed by a class guy in Larry. So I look forward to many great years working with him. But, you know, I think it's fun. It's a tremendous environment. When you put an atmosphere of the U of L UK together, there's so many more things you can do. And, and we're going to try and do that and have a lot of fun with it. We, I know from our administration to their administration, there's great respect for both both schools. And I think we're going to we're going to see a lot of things here to come. I really should have made this my first question. And thank you, so to speak, for providing the opportunity for us and WKYT in Lexington to bring the game to the fans. Because even if it's not on national television, it's still important. Well, it was very important to us to do this because we know this is a tough ticket to get a hold of and we wanted both our fans and the blue fans to make sure they had an opportunity to see the game and you know it's been a lot better game for them right now than it is for us but I hope everybody enjoys it and it, and, and will come out and see us whenever we're, uh, we're playing not each other. You know if you're driving down the I-65 now and you look over at the U of L campus you know it's a U of L campus now. Tom earlier this week you had the official dedication of Cardinal Park and I'm telling you what when you came in you mentioned this to me and you said this thing's going to go Don it's going to take off fast. It's just incredible what's happened. Well we're excited about it. It's certainly a tremendous project and uh, you know certainly with the help and benefit of Owsley Frazier, who was the chair of this project, our president, John Shoemaker, we've been able to take this thing, I think, uh, to, to state-of-the-art proportions. We're really excited what it does for us for gender equity. It gives all of our Olympic sports an opportunity to be able to participate, not only just for numbers, but for championships. And I think what here you're seeing the, the softball field, which I think is state-of-the-art. The Joe Kitchen Memorial Pavilion, that's the dedication that we had on Wednesday, was a sensational day. The track, the soccer field, the new field hockey field, the, the new playground we're putting in, the Lenny's Lyle statue, the Jewish hospital uh, cardio path that's going to intertwine, then the athletic facility that will house all of our athletes. It will give them locker rooms, training rooms, etc. You know, it's, it's so much fun and, and so well-deserved for our athletes. And, Tom, you know, when you talk about this now, you know, everybody says, oh, that's fine and good and it's real nice, but these facilities are second to none in the nation, aren't they? Well, I'm probably a little biased, but I believe they are. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of good ones around, but we feel for what we have and the piece of land that we had, we were able to tailor make this perfectly. And as I said the other day, this is this is good, just scratching the surface. You know, we've got a lot of plans set forward. We're, we're building Parkway Field, rebuilding that to make that a sensational baseball park for our baseball team. We're hopefully will break ground middle of January for the new pool, $18 million pool that it'll be one of the best in the country. The, the field house is not too far behind. So we got a lot of things on the drawing board and who knows, maybe we'll have an arena here real quick. I tell you what, Tom, it's been certainly exciting uh, for all the Cardinal fans. But you know, you told me this too, and it certainly has become a real synergism for this community with Owsley Frazier and the other people stepping up. But this is more than just benefits you and your student athletes oh, too. There's no doubt about it. You know, and it all starts with the president. John Shoemaker is a tremendous leader, a guy that, you know, I mean, I, I didn't even know where Louisville was when I took this job and he sold me on it and everything he said that he was going to do, he's done. And it truly is a university on the move. And I know that's just coining a phrase, but this is a man that's very dynamic and a guy that I really enjoy working with. He does, he lets you do what you want. You make good plans. He stands behind you and he's been a tremendous help. I really look forward to many, many years to come working with him. I tell you what, he's a guy when he talks, people certainly do listen. No, doubt no question about it. About that. Tom, I know you've got a lot of things in place now, too. The other parts of the program, basketball recruiting's gone well. Women's athletics is on the move, but really, top to bottom, we did this with John L. you got to feel really good where things are positioned now compared to where it was. Really, when you came in for your goals, you're really ahead of schedule, aren't you? Well, I don't know if you ever had a schedule. I, I, I'm not satisfied yet. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not satisfied. I want to get better. I think there's a lot of work we can do. We're, you know, we're just now getting our programs where we compete. I want to start competing for champions and getting up at that level and, and make sure that we do a good job, make this community and state proud. And I think we've got a lot of work to do, Donnie. I think, you know, I, I see another three good solid years of building a foundation. Then I think if you do everything right and you do it with integrity and think of the student athlete first, let them all be ambassadors for your university and community, everybody wins. I tell you what, I've showed you this many, many times. If I went back in athletics again or was an athlete again, you'd be an AD that I'd want to work and play for. Tom, congratulations. Uh, I know regardless of what happens in this football game, things are on the move. This is a wonderful series and thanks for letting us be a part of it. Well, you got to give Kentucky a lot of credit. I'll tell you, I'm very impressed with their offensive line tonight. They're doing a heck of a job. Uh, Jared's doing a great job and uh, you know, I just hope we can come back and get a couple breaks and maybe make 
some things happen. But it's great. However it comes out, I think it's great for the state. I think it's great for high school football. I think it's great for youth football. And to be able to sit around the entire summer and talk about U L and Kentucky in a football game is magnificent. And many people really thought that would never happen, and it has. Tom, great to see you. Thank Let you. you get back to work, and uh, thanks for sharing some time with us. And again, congratulations on Cardinal Park. It certainly it, has brought so much to camp. We're very proud. Right. Thank you. Tom Jurich, the athletic director, University of Louisville. If the guy had a little energy, we'd be all right. 19 to 7, the cats over the cards. More of our Kroger halftime report coming up. Welcome back to our Kroger halftime report. We're glad to have you along from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium with the Wildcats of Kentucky leading the Louisville Cardinals 19 to 7 at the intermission. As Kentucky got off to a quick start offensively, Craig, and Louisville had to play some catch-up. Lorenzen was very impressive. But I think over, overall, probably John L. Smith was fairly pleased with Dave Ragone. But uh, really, the problem has been having to slow down Kentucky's offense with Lorenzen. Yeah, it really has. They came into the game with real high hopes defensively. And really, the secondary hasn't played bad. A lot of the plays have happened with the defensive line just not getting to the quarterback, giving him a lot of time. Lorenzen's taken well, good advantage of it because he's made things happen. Well, if you did miss any of the first half we have an opportunity to show you our first half highlights and our highlights coming up here from the first half and watch Lorenzo right off the bat uh, you see him strong arm and gets the touchdown pass here nice move by Dougie Allen yeah it really was good good sitting in the pocket there waiting waiting for the guy to break open when he did he put the ball on on timing and now you see Lorenzo again look at the time that he has here Craig and uh, Give him that much time, he finds Derek Smith. Yeah, as a defensive back, you can't cover. He pumped fake five times there, and you just can't allow that to happen. And finally, the Louisville Cardinals. There's the junior college transfer, Deion Branch. Yeah, everyone knew he'd be exciting. First catch, first touchdown there. They got to get the ball in his hands more. And Lorenzen, he can throw it. Guess what? He can run it as he takes it in for the score. Yep, once again, same thing. Hate to beat a dead horse, but he's got plenty of time there to hang on to the ball, pump fake, wait for an opening, then he ran in and scored. As the first half highlights here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. We have statistics and much, much more coming up as our Kroger halftime report continues from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Here's our Welcome back to our Kroger Halftime Report. We're live at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, Kentucky 19, Louisville 7. Glad to have you along, Don Russell, Craig Swaback, on our Kroger Halftime Report. Let's take a look at our first half statistics brought to you by Hardee's. Hardee's, super satisfying. Craig, the numbers. Uh, Kentucky, big advantage overall yardage, 231 to 61 here. Big number here that jumps out of me, Louisville, 67 yards passing in the first half. Not real good. They usually throw for a lot more than that. Both quarterbacks doing a real nice job completing passes, getting yards. Penalties, Kentucky's had more. Louisville's really seemed to hurt them. Time of possession even. One big one that jumps out not on there right now, those sacks. I don't think Louisville has gotten Lorenzen on the ground for a sack yet. Last year, sacked Bonner eight times. And uh, to me, that's been the difference in the first half. And you see the one turnover. That was the fumble by Ragon created by Grigsby. And that's when the Cardinals had the ball somewhat on the move. So looks like maybe in this second half, every possession is going to be crucial for scoring opportunities. And, of course, uh, Kentucky has to be pleased the fact that they're the team with the advantage. And uh, Louisville's a team that has to play catch up. Yeah, ever since that first series, Louisville seems to be just a little bit on their heels. They got struck against early twice there, and they've kind of been on their heels fighting back into it. So they've got their work cut out for them in the second half. Kentucky 19, Louisville 7. Don't go away. More of our Kroger Halftime Report coming up as the Kroger Halftime Report from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. We're about children and adults. Fox are brought to you by... Pepsi, who gives thirsty people good things to drink. By Kroger, go cards, go Krogering. By Jewish Hospital, the best place for your heart. By Powertail, you want affordable wireless service? We're on that. By the Kentucky Lottery, somebody's gonna win, might as well be you. By Papa John's, try our new thin crust pizza, Papa John's. And by the U of L Cardware Store, the largest selection of U of L merchandise anywhere. The cards are on Fox. Cards on Fox, glad to have you along tonight here and in the Bowling Green area on Fox 19 to 7. Kentucky over Louisville. Well, we've been watching off to our left 
from our press box location quite a bit tonight, seeing uh, some lightning off in the area, and they say it's a, a storm possibly about 30 minutes away as that direction at the open end of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. And I think uh, the officials are out there now talking with the coaches about the prospect. You see a little bit of flashing of the lightning there about what could possibly uh, transpire here with the weather. Uh, Craig, though, while we have the opportunity, though, let's go back and uh, look at our Bud Light game plan from prior to the game and uh, see how you did there, young man. Yeah, take a look at it here. Uh, start with Kentucky, protect Lorenzen. They definitely get a check there. Uh, really only got knocked down one time in the first half. Secondly, the new defensive tackles. Louisville's ran the ball real well. They, they've had success up the middle. Contain Arnold Jackson, big check there. Arnold uh, has one or two catches in the first half. Really hasn't made a big impact on the game like you would expect. On Louisville's side, offensive line, they've done a pretty good job. They've run the ball effectively. Uh, Ragone has had time to get the ball off when he needs to. Put pressure on Lorenzen. I'm going to put a couple X's there because most of the things that have happened in the first half happened when Lorenzen had plenty of time to find his first, second, sometimes third receiver, take off running a couple times. No special teams mistakes. Uh, they've been solid in the special teams. So really, the difference in the game so far, Kentucky's offensive line keeping Lorenzen clean. That's our Bud Light game plan, and I know you love this because of your kids. What's up? What's up? Budweiser <laughs> and the Fiesta Ole going on at the Belvedere through late tonight, and then over the weekend, the WGZB Labor Day Heritage Reunion at Waterfront Park. Budweiser proud to be a part of that, and also every Monday night with Monday Night Football with participating beverage locations on September the 4th. Budweiser, what's up with Bud? What's up here? Are the cards and the cats as we get ready for quarter number three. And it'll be brought to you by your friends at Jewish Hospital. And Jewish Hospital providing service to all 600 student athletes in 22 different sports at the University of Louisville. And did you know that the Jewish Hospital Fraser Institute has been providing service to U of L student athletes for three years. Here's Zeke Parker with great speed. Zeke Parker breaks a tackle and is knocked down at the 33, 34 yard line by Jed Bassett. Again, a reserve linebacker. And the Cardinals will go on the offense. I would imagine, Craig, that Dave Ragone had a pretty steady first half as you look at the comparison. I mean, gosh, you only have, what, five incompletions between the two and 25 passes. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. No interceptions, the one fumble by Ragone. Both quarterbacks have played real well. Uh, Louisville, only nine passing attempts. You don't see that too much in the John L. offense. So I'd imagine they're going to spread the field a little bit in the second half and throw the ball a little more. And the advantage really to Kentucky in the big plays as well. Yeah, it really was. So Ragone has one setback. It's Tony Stallings, and Stallings not much there at all. Oh, was a real lightning flash at that time off beyond the stadium. I mean, some real flashes. Of course, we saw what happened in Blacksburg about a week ago. Game actually canceled when they had uh, Virginia Tech. So we'll keep our eyes peeled on the game and the weather. Of course, when it gets this hot and humid, you can expect those thunderstorms and lightning to pop up. Not that I'm a meteorologist, mind you, but know enough that that can be the case this time of year. Ragone rolls out, flag down, throws. After really, it was out of bounds. You might even hear the thunder in the background. Not a real clean start the first couple plays here for Louisville. Uh, no gain on the first play. Now holding penalty again, getting themselves in that yardage you don't have good plays for. First have, and 23, second and 15. Might have been number 61, the junior Aaron Darzinski. Of course, Padgett, Darzinski, and O'Shaughnessy, all returning starters, Scott Graham and Rob Ebel, the new faces as terms of starters, although both have played some in reserve roles. As John L. Smith looks on, as Cardinals trail the Cats 19 to 7. Well, you know, some people are beginning to head to a little bit of cover. Safe for ground down below. And, you know, Louisville to me looks like some, a team that really needs a big play to spark them. They're not really lethargic now, but they're just kind of, you know, they're just kind of out there playing. They need something to really jumpstart. 10 yard penalty. Repeat. 
Second down. Well, and they're digging themselves a hole, as you mentioned, penalties. Well, you know, I think last year, although Chris Redmond and company were just so impressive in Lexington, I think Kentucky really took the Cardinals a little bit lightly last year after waxing them here the year before. And I think Hal Mummy and has had his team pretty much emotionally psyched for this one. And you could see that by the uh, yeah, they're real, they're 13 nothing lead. Yeah, no question about it. They came prepared to play and they're doing a nice job. But Gone looking for somewhere to go and doesn't find much. Maybe picked up four or five yards. And that's about the extent of it. Knocked down by Matt Leo, the senior out of Miami. Five yards well, Ragone had uh, one of the officials in his way. Looks like here, Craig. Yeah, sure did here. He tucks it down looking for a guy. Takes off running here. Official right there got right in Get his out way. Of my way. He's trying to make something happen <laughs> there, and it really did. Well, at least he could have blocked a little for straighter. It, right? Yeah, turn around and give me some interference here. And Tough they, play here, third and long. He used to tell me, do something or get out of the way. Of course, I was a kicker, so disregard that. Ragone throws on the run, way underthrown, intended for Arnold Jackson. Not a good series at all for the Cardinal offense on its first possession. Now, real di disjointed there. They're, they're breaking out a little bit. They really need to, to crank it up here, make something happen. Um, kind of ho-hum. So that'll bring sophomore Chris Savori out of Louisville St. X onto the field. Number 43 to punt it away. And it'll be Kendrick Shanklin back to receive the punt. This guy's a good punt return man and a very low kick once again and a poor kick. That kick covered about 20 yards and we have penalty markers down on the field. And we'll check out the flag. So all the scoring came in the first half. Kentucky, 13 of the 19 points came on Hal Mummy's team's first two possessions. And since then, they got the touchdown run by Lorenzen. Louisville's only score on a Dave Ragone to Dion Branch touchdown strike. Well, John L. Smith, you might hear through our mics on the sideline talking about somebody that he shoved him in the back and knocked him down. You can tell John L. not the least bit pleased about that. that. That's a strange call. They've got holding, but yet it's 20 yards downfield on the covering team, not the receiving team. Let's see if we can sort this out. Illegal block in the back on the kick. That penalty is declined. First down. Well, a lot of talk and a lot of discussion about nothing, as it turned out. And you see John L. now checking on one of the Cardinals that might have been the guilty party and wanting to know what happened. So now we're back to play, ready to go as Lorenzen and the Cats taking on the offense for the first time here in the second half of play. And Lorenzen fires a strike in and out of the hands of Derek Smith. There's a case where he probably threw it too hard. Yeah, really did. Quick pattern there and stuck it in there real quick. and. Either case him putting it in there too hard or trying to run before you caught it. You know, they've all actually discussed. I mean, this guy's like, uh, well, he's not quite big enough. He's a little big for Sandy Koufax, but yeah. you're talking about a left-hander that zips it in there. He actually, some of the receivers think as we watch it from this angle, try to look it in that he's knocked a breath out of some receivers, he cracked he, some ribs. He literally threw that right through his hands. That's a, that's a hard pass. Great shot there. Uh, from the end zone camera. And the lightning off to our left creeps up again. This one, Lorenzen complete. And Gary Hughes makes the catch and then falls down. Well, all the excitement came pretty early in this one. Yeah, it really did. You compare this to the last couple games where they put points on the board about a point a minute. A uh, little bit of a de defensive struggle here up late. Well, maybe one of the defenses will get some points in this game. 19 to seven, as you see in our Jewish Hospital third quarter. Third and 12 for Kentucky. Lorenzen from the shotgun. 
Throws in and out of the hands of number seven, Neil Brown. Michael Brown on the coverage on the play. Of course, Michael, that outstanding true freshman season at linebacker. He really did. Defensive tackle there, making him rush up the field just a little bit, getting him out of his comfort zone there, throws a little wobbly pass there. Seems to be when you get a little pressure on him, he's not real comfortable sitting in there. So now Kentucky, like Louisville, will be forced to punt after not moving the ball on the offensive possession. Not a stellar start to either offense, but both defenses are playing pretty good. So Hanson will drop back. He'll be punting from about the 25-yard line. Arnold Jackson awaits it at the Cardinal 22. Gets the kick away, a good one, and Jackson will catch it at the 20 and go down at the 17. Again, good coverage by Leonard Burris. And he did an outstanding job as Jackson had absolutely nowhere to go. We have a timeout with 12 minutes and eight seconds remaining. Jackson has not been able to shake loose tonight against the Cats. Welcome back to our Jewish Hospital third quarter. You saw a little bolt of the lightning off here to the open end of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Don't forget, every Sunday night at 10.30, you can check out the John L. Smith Show right after Fox News at 10. Gary Montgomery and John L. Smith will take a look at the previous game and look ahead. That's the John L. Smith Sunday night at 10.30 on Fox 41. And due to that, tomorrow night, the final edition of Inside Kentucky and Golf will be aired on Monday night at 10.30. Chris Lester gets the carry and picks up eight, maybe close to nine yards before Gaten and McCree both came over there to knock him down. And, well, the Cardinals, again, trail by only 12, Craig, and obviously plenty of time just under the 12-minute mark. But yep. uh, need to take advantage of every possession when Kentucky doesn't score. Yeah, they really do, because you don't know if you're going to shut them out the rest of the game or not. Lester, so far to me, has been real impressive offensively uh, running with the football. Ragone back to throw. This one is complete to Branch. This guy has great speed and moves. Makes a couple of moves, still on his feet, up to the near the midfield strike. Dion Branch knocked down finally by David Johnson. But this is a good looking junior. Had to sit out last year due to academics, but this guy is lightning in a bottle. Yeah, he can make it happen. Last year on the scout team, they'd play him at quarterback, they'd play him at running back. Everything he did was exciting, making guys miss. Good little throw and catch here. And once he gets the ball in the open field, he makes things happen. Nice move there. Earlier on the touchdown catch, made a few guys miss. You know, it's interesting to see guys that have been out of football for you, how exciting they get when they get back on that field and get to compete again. And you see Gaten there getting uh, some attention. Looks like he might have a cramp in his left calf. The Kentucky training staff is working on him there. And now Gaten appears. He's going to get a little assistance. But don't forget, if you want to know everything that's happening in Cardinal Athletics, get your subscription to the Louisville Sports Report, your source for Cardinal Sports. That's the local and toll-free number to call. Ron Steiner, Russ Brown, Jason Puckett, all the guys do a great job. We're picking against the dog again this yep, year. Yep, sure. Right? I think we ended up tied last year after 100 or so games. But Ron does a great job with the newspaper. Keep yourself informed with the sports report. 19 to 7, Kentucky. Ragone looking long, puts it up in the air for Branch, and he can't catch up with it. Actually had a step on David Johnson. Well, Ragone showing his arm strength there because he just with the most of ease threw that ball about 50 yards. Yeah, impressive. Both quarterbacks, young guys. There's a lot of, a lot of football going to be played in the next few years with these guys throwing the football. Like you said, very easily lofted that ball out there about 60 yards in the air. And, you know, that's twice now they've gone deep. Just off base, just a little bit on both passes. But Branch Great has five, five catches for 79 yards. Jackson, three for nine. And Zeke Parker is yet to pull in a reception. Of course, he was 
not in the wide receiver position early in the game. And there's Chris Lester with a nice run as he gets the Cardinal first down, down to the 35-yard line, knocked out by Eric Kelly. And I know that Chris Lester knows he's going to have a good opportunity in his junior year here. It, he's going to be fun to watch this youngster here. Good explosive move up the field. He's got nice lateral movement there. And then at the end, here's what I like, little stiff arm there. I'll tell you what, he just took him off to the sidelines. So that was a punishing run all the way around. You know, he's going to do nothing to get better. He's only been here a couple weeks so far. They're happy with where he's at so far. The more he learns to block and pick up blitzes, I think you'll see him develop into the every down back. Ragone barks out signals to the right. He has four wide receivers, and Lester, the lone setback, going to have to hurry, and he took too long. It's going to be a delay penalty. Well, I guess that's a, a good indication as much as anything what happens with a first-year starter. Yeah, it really is. We talked earlier in the pregame show about little things to look at to see how they're doing. First time there, they got stuck by the clock. Earlier, Lorenzen, they moved up the defense, and Coach Mummy had to call a timeout. Check out some scores from across the country on our Hamilton Printing scoreboard. Louisville's award-winning Hamilton Printing. Florida, 17 in the nation, all over Ball State. That's a fourth quarter score. Miami of Ohio and Bandy tied up at the half. More scores as we get back to live play. Here's Lester looking for the corner. And Lester dives and is close to first down yardage. You see Tennessee and Southern Miss 7-3. That's at the half. Yeah, Southern Miss always goes on the road plays real good. And I'll tell you what, they've got a real good chance tonight down at Tennessee, it looks like, if they get some offense. Lester made all this happen on himself. Little draws must go back to the left. He saw an opening, took off to the right end. Pretty good speed there for the big guy. And he gains nice five yards there. And it was 21 Tatum and 24 watched you. It got in there and knocked down number 32, Junior Chris Lester. On second and 11, Ragone back to throw, steps up in the pocket. Now he rolls to the left, makes one move, and it is wrapped up and thrown down at the 30-yard line by Marlon McCree, the senior. He's one of the captains at 68 total tackles in 99. 4-4 speed, a converted defensive back. So this guy has some speed. And Ragone now will face a third down and five for Louisville. Across the middle, wide open, 86, Ronnie Gent, and Gent the tight end. Well, the Cardinals saw Derek Smith and Chase Park be utilized as tight ends by Jared Lorenzen, and I think Dave Ragone decides he needs to do the same thing for Louisville. Yeah, it really does. There's the guy they're really excited about. Ronnie Gent preseason has looked really good. They can't wait to get him out and involved. First catch of the year there, and he's a very athletic guy. He's going to do a lot of good things for the Cardinals. 6'2", 235-pound sophomore in Lakeland, Florida. Well, we understand it's some heavy rain downtown, not too far from here, and flags fly everywhere once again. And we'll have to check out the penalty marker as Ragone comes over to get a clean towel from the sideline. <laughs> Offense. Been a lot of that from the Cardinals. Yeah, tonight. it really has. It looks like first game they've played. Uh, new offensive line, new quarterback. They've had three or four false starts, delay of the game. And, you know, you can only have first and 15, first and 20 so many times before it comes back to bite you. So now it'll make it first and 15 after that motion penalty for Ragone and the Cardinals. 19 to 7. Our score, and this one caught, but a short game for Arnold Jackson. Not much there at all, Eric Kelly. He's the best card, uh, cat cover man, and you can bet from the beginning that number 20, senior Eric Kelly out of Panama City would be taking the assignment of Arnold Jackson. Yeah, and that's a tough assignment. He's been doing a nice job. You see Louisville's gone to Deion Branch a few times here. Not often that you're going to have another receiver with more catches than Arnold. So nice job uh, by Kelly. And the fourth reception in the game by senior Arnold Jackson. 
who will be shooting for the all-time NCAA receiving record this year. Here's Lester, and he explodes for two, maybe three yards. It'll bring up a third down and long, Dennis Johnson. Junior out of Harrodsburg, second-year starter. High school All-American, brings down Lester. Eight minutes, 37 seconds. You see what Lester's done in the game on 10 carries. I'm not real smart, but that's 6.7 yeah. yards a carry. How's that? <laughs> so big, big third down conversion here for Louisville. They got third 10. They need to get in the end zone for seven points here. The 10th play in this drive for the Cardinals, third and nine. Ragone back to throw, fires, Jackson, touchdown, Louisville! Well, we talked about the arm strength of Lorenzen, Dave Ragone, this baby's like a frozen rope. Yeah, it really is. Good coverage by Kelly there. Real small opening to put the ball in. He went ahead and stuck it in. Good catch by Jackson. Same slant pattern that Dion Grant scored on earlier. Delashka with the extra point attempt, and it is good. So we have a five-point game as Arnold Jackson gets this 27th career touchdown reception. We'll be right back. Kentucky's lead is five as the rain starts to fall at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Cardinal Stadium, well, we may be the only ones that's going to be left here because they are sending both teams to the locker room. We have extreme area. Nineteen to fourteen. Nineteen fourteen our score. Sorry about the little crosstalk there. We're trying to find out what's happening uh, with the weather situation. Well, the rain started now. And an official announcement from Kenny Klein. Uh, officials have detected lightning in the area and determined that conditions may be unsafe for the game to continue at this point. We ask that everyone return to their vehicles in an orderly fashion as the rain comes down now and they want them to tune their radios to WHS radio, 84 WHS on your dial. And again, officials have detected lightning in the area and determined that conditions may be unsafe for the game to continue. So they've asked everyone to, in an orderly fashion, return to their cars here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium as the rain really blows in here in a 19 to 14, what we call a suspended game at this point due to lightning. 19 to 14, Kentucky with the advantage as you see some of the faithful that have elected to stay out here. But uh, there's always that opportunity, Craig, when you get to this time of year. And uh, we were talking today that it looked like that we were going to have August weather in September. Yeah, I'll tell you what, as hot as it is out here uh, late summer, they moved the game the nighttime to get out of the heat, and then we end up with a little thunderstorm here tonight. Well, we are trying to find out exactly. Of course, we will have somewhat of a delay here, and I want to... Our friends at WKNT-TV Fox Channel 40 in Bowling Green, please stay alert to us for any cues we'll give you down the line as to uh, you might need some alternative programming to go to while we're in this delay at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Right now, uh, really whipping around here in the stadium in a 19 to 14 game, lightning in the area. Of course, the way this is moving right now, it could possibly blow through and just a matter of time. But for right now, it's a 19 to 14 Kentucky lead and our Jewish hospital third quarter as play is suspended due to lightning in the area right now with eight minutes and 11 seconds remaining. We're gonna take a break as the cats in the cards, well, it's raining cats and dogs right now. We'll be right back. Nasty storm going on here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. You can probably hear we're having some audio problems due to this extreme.
condition weather-wise here. As you see, the uh, camera covered with raindrops. I mean, it is a driving rain. We've had lightning in the area, and everybody just trying to take cover right now and trying to be safe. So we'd uh, like to find out exactly what's happening, but we can tell you that both teams have left the field, both Kentucky and Louisville, instructed to go back to the locker room due to inclement weather. So once again, we apologize if we have some audio problems. Let's go but, back uh, to our studios this for a storm uh, uh, situation. There's not much we local can do. Programming. Well, we'd we'll, like to we'll, alert we'll our station on as we go. Fox Channel 40 stay in Bowling with us, Green. We'll keep you posted. Uh, please stay with us, but we're going to send you back now to uh, some local programming from both Fox 41 and Fox Channel 40 in Bowling Green. Stay tuned, and we'll give you updates. But John's Cardinal Stadium in our Ford fourth quarter, 13:38 remaining. Our power tail game summit, Craig. We had that hour and 14 minute storm delay. Kentucky has made three turnovers, and Ragone having a good night tonight, 13 to 20 and two scores. Yeah, he really is. And since the first quarter and a half, the Louisville defense has settled down and playing some real good football. And speaking of good football, that completion to Ronnie Gent, the sophomore tight end, getting really into the swing of the offense now with the Cardinals as Dave Ragone and Louisville knows that that one point lead is not what you want to have coming down to the late moments of the game. And I have to say really Ragone after the impressive start by Lorenzen and Kentucky he kept his composure. He didn't panic at all and has done a good job bringing the Cardinals back. Yeah, he really has. True team leader. He hasn't panicked all night tonight. And, you know, the coaching staff said before the game, we're sticking with him. We're going to go with him. He's our guy. Oh, here's a bad snap. Ragone goes back to pick it up. Loose ball picked up by Kentucky. Touchdown, Wildcats. Marlon McCree. So Marlon McCree gets the touchdown after scooping up the first Cardinal turnover by Dave Ragone. And Kentucky regains the lead at 25-20. And now we'll go for two. Right from the get-go, the snap right over his head. And then Ragone tries to do the good thing there and get on the ball. Really didn't have a chance to pick it up right there. Marlon McCree in the right place at the right time and takes it in for the score. We have a timeout here by Kentucky prior to the conversion. And we have a break in the action as McCree gets the touchdown for the Cats and UK back in front by five. Kentucky forced to take a timeout because after that defensive touchdown on the bad snap by the Louisville Cardinals and Marlon McCree takes it in, Lorenzen couldn't find his helmet. He was at the other end of the bench, so they had to take a timeout. It looked like, Craig, that was just a bad exchange, a high snap from uh, veteran senior Jason Padgett. Yeah, haven't had any trouble all preseason with the snap from the center to the quarterback. A little high and hard there and got through his hands. So Lorenzen has his helmet, has the Cats set up for a potential two-point conversion. Lorenzen throws, and it's caught for the two-point conversion by Derek Smith. Fine throw by Lorenzen to Derek Smith, and Kentucky has a seven-point lead. A big, big night for Derek Smith. And I tell you what, Waylon's gone, but they haven't lost anything with yeah, this big haven't. guy. Good coverage here. Michael Brown's in good position. He just missed time to come there. Bump right over his head there. And uh, good throw by Lorenzen. Uh, Michael Brown, though, really had good coverage. He just missed times it here. Yep. Jumped a little bit too early. Not to take anything away from Mr. Smith, though. That was a nice catch. Oh, no question about it. And Derek Smith, you know, Mr. Football in Kentucky, was an outstanding basketball player as well. And he's a big guy at 6'6", 260, out of Silver Grove, Kentucky. Has a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And with 12.50 remaining in our Ford fourth quarter, Kentucky moves back in front by seven. Now well, Zeke Parker could change that in a hurry. He has not had a great return tonight. Driving 
returning kick. Parker will take it at the goal line, coming to the near sideline. Not much room at first. Now he sets up some speed. Zeke Parker across midfield. Zeke Parker to the Kentucky 30. think he doesn't have anywhere to go, watch him come up the near sideline. Yeah, I'll tell you, he's speed, speed guy, but he uses a lot of desire, running through tackles, one, two, three, and once he gets a crack, I'll tell you what, he turns it on, he nearly goes the distance. And he stiff arms the kicker, Brandon Sanders, but Sanders held on long enough to get some help. Ragone back to throw, fires to Jackson. Jackson looking for a block. Jackson at the 20. Jackson to the 19, maybe the 18-yard line. Eric Kelly pulls down Arnold Jackson from behind. Jackson is one of those guys that breaks one of those rules you say not to. Don't ever go backwards after you catch it. But the coaches don't mind at all when Jackson does it because more often than not, he makes something happen. So the Cardinals coming right back after that fine return by Zeke Parker. Well, I guess all you got to do is let Zeke know you want something to happen, and he'll make it happen for you. Instantaneous. 27 to 20, Kentucky. We're in our forward fourth quarter. You see the time remaining. Over 12 minutes left in this one. Ragone looking into the end zone, and it's caught! Puts it over the outside shoulder. Dion Branch again, second score of the night. Outstanding. And the Cardinals with a chance to tie. And we have a 27 all game. Just like that, I tell you what, Dion Branch, they spoke about him as a Duco. He gets his second touchdown reception in this game. Oh, we got a good one going on with 12.05 left. We're tied at 27. Welcome back live to Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, Louisville and Kentucky, all tied at 27 with 12 minutes and five seconds remaining in our Ford fourth quarter. And Greg, I tell you what, you can't take anything away from a game, but that cheap touchdown after that bad snap that McCree heads up, picked it up and scored. But uh, give Louisville credit. They knew something went by the board, but they came right back after the great return by Parker. Yeah, they really did. Lightning quick strike right there. And I'll tell you, Louisville sent some break has shown an increase in here. Here's 28, Martez Johnson. He's going backwards, still on his feet, and is knocked down at the 12. Great coverage by Kentucky. Rashad Holman and Brian Gaines. Great coverage by the Louisville Cardinals. Our cross Pontiac GMC Jeep scoring drive, only two plays. 30 yards, that's Ragone to Branch. That was after the Zeke Parker kickoff return. Don't forget to stop by Cross Motors and look for their loyalty rebate, $8,000 on a new 2000 Grand Cherokee Limited. That's at Watterson Expressway and Newburgh Road. Well, the Crunch Zone's making some noise now. Lorenzen, the throw, fires, and it's complete. And in the open field, a good game for the Wildcats. Dougie Allen makes the catch number 88. He has already had a touchdown reception in this game. The junior out of Lexington Dunbar High School. I'll tell you, give Lorenzen credit. He sits right there in the pocket, had a few things go bad for him lately. Hangs in there, sticks it in there. Nice throw, nice catch and run by Dougie Allen. Isn't this a great series? Oh, what a great is. game. And like we said in the pregame, with the youth on these teams, Nothing but big things for the future of this series. Including two first game starters, Jared Lorenzen 
And Dave Ragone, Hyatt in motion, now sets up in a slot to the right. Lorenzen, pump fakes, throws, and it's intercepted by Holman! Rashawn Holman picks it off, and he's knocked down the ball loose, but the Cardinals recover. Lorenzen's pass intercepted, and Holman brings it back. And Rashad really got stuck he after really he got fell off at the end of this play. There's Sorrenta. Looked at the same receiver the whole time here. A little pump fake. I'll tell you, nice play by Holman, sinking back in coverage right there. And right now, just a heck of a play by Abney knocking the ball loose. And good hustle by the Cardinals to get on the loose ball. Once again, hustling around the field. Good look at Mummy right here. Ah, oh, Jared, don't throw it there. If you can read lips, you can tell how Mummy was not happy. So the Cardinals and the Cats all tied at 27. It's first and 10 Louisville, the ball at the Kentucky 46. Ragone right back to the air if he can. Now he fumbles the ball, tries to get it back, and I think the Cardinals finally do. I guess one thing that we know for sure is the ball is being wet. Yeah, the ball's getting real slippery on both sides right now. It was Matt Leo the senior out of Miami that knocked it loose. Here's a situation here where we're going. They had four receivers going deep. If they're covered, just go ahead in that situation. Throw it out of bounds, come back in second and 10. Good hustle by Joe O'Sonnesy, number 77. The strong guard to get on that elusive pigskin. Second down and 13 for the Cardinals. And they hand it off up the middle. Big hole for Stallings. Stallings still on his feet to the 20. Stallings to the 28-yard line. Another look at it here. Counter trap. They've had success all night with it. Once Stallings gets into the open field, it's all strong run. Another stiff arm there. Him and Lesser both doing a great job of stiff arm and running physical. And I'll tell you, you got to go to work to get Stallings down. I tell you what, he and Lester both have performed very well, Craig, tonight. They have. John L. Smith talked about Lester earlier in the week. He said one of the things it's done is brought the level of all the running backs up to a new level by the competition it creates. Close to 100 yards for the... Outstanding sophomore here, Stallings again, breaks the tackle. Picks up maybe a yard or two, knocked down by Chris Gayton, the outside linebacker who's been so active for Kentucky tonight. But Stallings, the junior out of Bedford, Ohio, had only one attempt and one yard coming into this game in his career. Yeah, he's performed real well, even here, right there, showing his niftiness inside there. There really wasn't much room to run there, and he's a shoestring tackle away from gaining some big yards again. Second down and nine for the Cardinals at the Kentucky 27. Ragone fires, complete the branch, penalty marker. It's a Cardinal first down, but we might have a holding call. Boy, They're a looking late, the ball was gone when it came down, but it's in the area of holding. And you could see him looking at Aaron Darzinski, number 61. So they're gonna bring this one back. Holding against Louisville. So that will negate the first down that Louisville had as they'll bring the ball all the way back out to the 38. On the offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat, second down. So Dave Ragone looks to the sideline looking to get a play from the Cardinal bench. See the penalty story, 19 total penalties. Yeah, really looking like the first game of the season for both schools. 19 penalties, brought a few turnovers. Not uncommon though early in the season. Second and very long, quarterback draw. We're going, lost the ball again. Scramble for it, and Kentucky's got it. Well, Louisville's laid it on the ground a couple of times and fortunately got it back, but not this time. Big number 33, Chris Gayton, does a fine job for the Kentucky defense. He comes up with a loose football, and the Cats get it back. Yeah, another look at a quarterback drawn. 
Dave got a little in a hurry there right there. He needed to set back a few more steps. He runs right into his blocker here. Then you see the ball come out. Actually, the official knocked away, it out. Second time tonight. The official knocked the ball loose. He created the fumble. Unbelievable. The official created the fumble. I have never seen that in all of my years of broadcasting. Where uh, an official got in the middle of the play and created a fumble. So Kentucky gets it back. Pinner on the carry and picks up three, maybe four top yards. That is incredible. Watch this again, Craig. The official creates the fumble. I've never seen this before, but you can see the official right here trying to get out of the way. His arms actually go out to protect him. When he does, the ball comes out. He literally stuck his hand in and knocked the ball out. Unbelievable. Bad break for the Cardinals. You know, you're supposed to be in the middle of the game, but please. I mean, it was certainly by accident, but nonetheless, he's been out of position a couple of times in the game. Lorenz in the throw, looking long, wide open, caught by 25, Clinton the forward, and he'll take it in for the touchdown. Sixty-seven yards on the touchdown as Quentin McCord takes it from Jared Lorenzen as they meet on the Wildcat sideline and Kentucky moves back in front 33-27. Brandon Sanders for the extra point. It's on the way, and the kick is good. So Kentucky, with 8.46 remaining, gets the lead on this touchdown pass. Take another look at here. Curry Burns goes for the interception right here, number 12. He missed times it, and once he does, there's no one over the top. Needed to just go make the sure tackle right there. He gambled and lost. As you see, Quentin McCord just coast in. Lorenzen, plenty of time once again, but as you mentioned, the gamble by Curry Burns, number 12. Yep, that safety, you're the last guy on the field there. If you're out of position, you need to go ahead and make the tackle, give up the 30-yard gain. When you gamble like that and you lose, it's always a touchdown. And you see the celebration by Quentin McCord. He's a senior out of LaGrange, Georgia. One of the captains had a foot injury in 99. Our cross Pontiac GMC Jeep scoring drive, two plays, 70 yards. Took only 15 seconds as Jared Lorenzen this time on the 67-yard strike to Quentin McCord. And don't forget to stop by Cross Pontiac GMC Dream. I love my Jeep, and you can stop in at Watterson Expressway in Newburgh Road. Boy, it has been a wild game after that one hour and 14 minute weather delay. I'll tell you, it really has. Louisville's done a good job offensively moving the ball. The turnovers hurt him. One, the snap over the quarterback's head here. The official causes a turnover. Next play, 67 yard touchdown. Well, let's see if Zeke Parker can do his magic once again as he takes it at the 10. Zeke breaks one tackle. He has a nice return out to the 23, maybe the 24-yard line. So now the Cardinals, Craig, find themselves behind again by seven, and they have 8.35 remaining. So you had the long touchdown pass, you had the breakdown on the bad snap, and the Cardinals can't afford to make any mistakes now. No, they really can't. You're down to crunch time now. You've got a little over eight minutes left in the game, and Louisville's offense has been moving the ball. They've got to get it in and get some points here. It's getting to be real tight now. You see Dave Ragone, three touchdown night, give up the middle to Lester, and Lester picks up three, maybe four yards. Comes up limping just a little bit, the junior college player who has run the ball very well along with Tony Stallings tonight for the Louisville offense. Well, this by far has been the most competitive game in the most recent years under both Hal Mummy and John L. Smith. The last two games were blowouts, but this one, I think everybody had the kind of feeling that it would come down to this. Yeah. Didn't expect an hour and 14 minute weather delay. 
So Ragone from the shotgun. Fires to Zeke Parker, but a short game. Good coverage by the Wildcats. Willie Gary was right there with Parker as he made the catch and didn't allow Parker to get his Jets in high gear. Good yeah, really defensive did. play. Little crossing route here. Zeke only runs about a three yard. You're trying to get one-on-one -on -one coverage here and break a tackle and run off with it, but he's all over him there. Good throw and catch, but a lot of work for a two yard game. Now a third down and three as the Wildcats enjoy the seven point lead with 7.21 remaining in our Ford fourth quarter here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. He's gonna have to hurry up to get it off. He does. Ragone fires, complete the branch. First down, Louisville. Dion Branch, he's been the money receiver tonight for Dave Ragone. Yeah, he really is. It looks like he's going to replace Lavelle Boyd. Lavelle Boyd with all the third down catches last year, this year. Dion Branch, same pattern, little slam pattern. Good look at Ragone, looking off the safety there. Then he hooks up on Branch, right on the numbers. Good, sure-handed catch. Seven receptions, 105 yards for Dion Branch and two touchdowns. Boy, what a game he has played. Yeah, they've got exciting receivers. Uh, defensive back's nightmare to play this team. First and 10 Cardinals. From their own 39-yard line, Arnold Jackson in motion to the near side. Ragone back to throw. Kentucky with the blitz. Ragone throws. Branch makes the catch. Oh, what a catch. Knocked down at the Kentucky 48, but he is the possession receiver. Yes, he is. He's the real deal. He goes up and snatches that ball out of the air there. Great job by Ragone. Feeling the rush. It's on him. He didn't panic. He moved around in the pocket a little bit. Keeps looking, looking, looking here. And halfway down to the ground, made something good happen that time. What a great job going up and getting that ball by Deion Branch. And the fumble came out of bounds. And the possession stays with Louisville. It was close enough to measure, and now they will move the change because it is a first down. Six consecutive completions for Ragone. Make it seven. Arnold Jackson. Oh, he's knocked down at the 15. Only Anthony Wachta got a piece of Arnold Jackson, or we would have had a potential for another tie score, and nobody knows it better than number 10 in the red. Yeah, you don't get him down often by a sure string tackle like that. But here's the case where the ball's actually underthrown. We're going to overthrown two or three of the long balls. This one's underthrown. Good coverage or Arnold stops, comes back, makes the play. And Woo, you won't get him down like that very often. And I mentioned Arnold Jackson only 5'8". And he can dunk a basketball with one hand, so he has great leaping ability. There was a good example of it there as Arnold Jackson for the 25th consecutive game has five or more catches. Oh, a mix up in the backfield and Lester and Ragone. There's probably an indication of only a couple of weeks of practice for Lester. Yeah, it really is. Can't tell which guy here was out of position there, but you know, new quarterback Lester's only been here a couple of days and the adrenaline's going there. And that, that's unfortunate for him there. Now, once again, they're in their second and 15. Hard to call good running plays or pass plays from that kind of yardage. Well, clock you see rolling in our forward fourth quarter, five and a half minutes remaining with Kentucky leading by seven. The modern series tied at three games apiece. Louisville trying to win for the first time ever at home against Kentucky. Ragone to throw, fires one out, complete the number six, Damian Dorsey. Dorsey inside the five, down to the four. Boy, everybody's into the act, Damian Dorsey Caught a touchdown pass in the Humanitarian Bowl a year ago, but those stats don't count, so he really didn't get one. Figure that out. Yeah, I'll tell you, these receivers, they just keep coming at you. Quick strike out there, one-on-one -on -one coverage, doing what they do best, making a guy miss, heading towards the goal line. I'll tell you, one after another, they just keep coming. So a big, big first down play for the Cardinals is now Ragone and company will face a first and goal at the three-yard line. Ragone to Lester, Lester, did he get in? Touchdown, Cardinal!
So Lester knows what it feels like to score as a collegian. Yeah, sure. It's straight ahead right there. Good movement by the offensive line. He smells the goal line, reaches out, and gets it. Something you don't ever forget, your first touchdown. Wade Talasha trying to tie up the game. And the kick is good. We are tied at 34. Five minutes and eight seconds remaining. And I tell you what, people question the running game, but Stallings and Chris Lester have been outstanding. And no question that our Subway super sub of the game has to be this young guy, Chris Lester, out of Miami, Florida, in Hancock College. Been real happy with his work ethic since he got here and, you know, turn the lights on. You never know how they're going to perform. And I'll tell you what, for our first game, two weeks into his college career, he's really playing good. Look at him, covering the ball up, getting his head down, moving forward, stretching across the goal line. Outstanding. No doubt that's your super sub of the game. And a different angle, same results. He was smelling the goal line. Right hook of that right there, stretching the ball out over it. That's the thing you can't teach, you know. When you get in closer, don't get close. Get it over the goal line and get it in and get the points. Lester, 15 carries, 71 yards, and his first Division I touchdown on that last carry. And we are tied at 34 with just over five minutes remaining. Unbelievable. You know, everyone was worried about replacing Frank Rowan. It's been a one-back offense, but so far, the combination of Stallings and Lester's paid off for him. Here's the kick, and the Cats will have a chance to return it. It goes to Shanklin at the nine. Shanklin, he's a good return man, tries to cut it outside. Finally pulled out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. So Kendrick Shanklin, really for the first time in the game, showing any type of explosive ability. Our cross Pontiac GMC Jeep scoring drive, eight plays, 77 yards. The three-yard touchdown run by Lester. And don't forget to stop by Cross, cross Pontiac. They'll have a Sierra 4x4 truck, a $2,000 rebate. And they have 30 GMC trucks to choose from. That's Cross Pontiac GMC Jeep, Watterson Expressway, and Newburgh Road. Now Lorenzen and Kentucky back to work. It may be whoever has the ball last wins this game. I'll tell you, it's like a heavyweight prize fight. Back and forth and back and forth. Lorenzen wants to throw and does. There's Derek Smith, the big tight end, who's had a big game, and he is a load to bring down. Derek Smith has had an outstanding game. I tell you what, they were really concerned about the loss of All-American James Whalen, but this guy, Derek Smith, he's even a bigger target. Yeah, he really is, 266 pounds. Big hit by Rashad Harris there. Just needs to wrap up, and then Roundtree can't get him down alone. Good hustle right there. The rest of the defense converging on him. I'll tell you, both quarterbacks doing a good job being behind, coming back, and making things happen. And Derek Smith, you can tell, with five receptions. Lorenzo now 304 yards through the air in his first college game. Second and three. Penner on the carry. Penner fighting, still on his feet, and almost gets up the first down yardage. Very, very close, shy of the first down marker. And we have an injured Wildcat, Nolan Devon, the junior center out of Corbin. You see him grimacing down on the Papa John's Cardinal Stadium turf. That is not a good sign. No, that's a that's a tough break for Kentucky right there with the new with the new quarterback and your veteran center in there. That that makes it awful tough. Our Hamilton printing scoreboard. Tennessee just does hang on as Southern Miss goes into Knoxville and almost knocks them off. Number 12 Tennessee and look at East Carolina shuts out Duke, 38 to nothing that final. Houston a seven point winner over Rice in the fourth quarter as that game is still in progress. And Army and Cincinnati will play on Labor Day at 4.30 p.m. That's our Hamilton Printing scoreboard, Louisville's award-winning Hamilton Printing. And the attention still to Devon. Nolan Devon, 6'5", 321-pound junior, who is a returning starter, and they are looking at that knee. Uh, we're not physicians, and you never like to speculate, but let's see if we can pick up what happened to him right here. here in the middle here's there's Devon right there oh yeah, there you go Ryan Gaines Ryan on his Gaines leg gets whipped yep. into his leg there and I'll tell you that's awful tough when you get hit from the side like that so 
So they will probably look for Aaron Daniel to move in. Oh, that's an unfortunate injury for Nolan Devon as unintentionally Brian Gaines kind of just whipped around into his knee. Well, our Pepsi preview, we like to support Cards Care at the University of Louisville, and the UofL team adopted the charity work. Sandy Pearsall, the softball head coach, feels very strongly about working with animal shelters and doing as much as she can in the team to help out the Kentucky Humane Society. Cards Care, the community action response effort at the University of Louisville. Third down and one, Kentucky. And they give it off the pinner, and he has the first down. Tell you, talk about Louisville's backs all night. That's an awful good run by Pinner right there. He hit that thing with the first and uh, exploded through and almost came out of there running. First down. And Artis Pinner has been a good runner tonight for the Wildcats. Good look at him coming right into your screen there. Great picture from the end zone there. And I'll tell you what, he's he's real close to squirting right through there. Four minutes, ten seconds remaining. In our Ford fourth quarter, we are tied at 34. Jared Lorenzen has thrown for 300 yards and three touchdowns. Now he's checking off at the line of scrimmage. Takes a snap, gives it to Penner again. And Penner running strong. Uh, Kentucky knows they can run some clock here, getting in scoring position. I think they want to put it in the end zone with very little time left on the clock so the Cardinals can come back. Yeah, I really think so. The way that Louisville's been moving up and down the field, three minutes to go, they're past the 50 now. They're probably in four down territory. They're going to keep moving the ball, moving it. Hopefully, you know, they're going to try to get in the end zone, but they'll settle for a field goal. What did we say about the defenses maybe having a dominant part in this game? <laughs> Well, actually, they did have some key plays. Second down and four for the Cats. And Lorenz in the throw. Wide open is Derek Smith again. He fumbles the ball, and the Cardinals recover. Harris created it, and Anthony Floyd recovers the Derrick Smith fumble. Another look at it. Missed coverage right there in the middle. Rashad Harris comes in here late right there. No, it's not Curry Burns making the play again. Burns with a nice good tackle right there. And then right in there comes Floyd to jump on the fumble. I'll tell you, turnovers in the second half have played a huge part in the game. And give credit to Curry Burns. We saw the two. It wasn't 52. It was 12. And a good heads-up play by Anthony Floyd to recover that loose ball. Five Kentucky turnovers. Ragone working on eight straight passes. Give to Stallings. Stallings trying to get outside. Stallings to the 33. First down, Cardinals. Tony Stallings on the carry. David Johnson comes up to make the stop on Stallings. So five Kentucky turnovers, and Louisville trying to make the last one to be the most costly one. Yeah, another good look at this. Just good hard running by Tony Stallings here. Not much inside. He's just running through and around, guys. Boy, what a hit oh. there by number six at the end. There has been some sticking in this game. We're going in trouble. And he goes down, but he covers up the ball. Matt Leo, the senior out of Miami, who's played a fine game for the Kentucky defense. Awesome eight on the play. Second down. As the Cardinals lose eight yards, and it's going to be second and 18. Well, will we see our first overtime game? In Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. We've had just about everything else tonight with the rain and the lightning and the delay. We might as well keep going a little longer. I told you this was a strange series. Here's the give to Stallings trying to pick his way for some yardage. Actually got quite a bit out of nothing. Dwayne Robertson, the freshman out of Memphis, Tennessee. True freshman, 6'3", 285 pounder. And we have one of the Cardinals down. I believe it's Tony Stallings. Well, now he's going to pop up. Well, he tried to, and now Dr. Raymond Shea and Dwayne Triolo coming out to check on what happened to Stallings here. Another look at their bread and butter play, the counter trap there. Finds a little opening. 
Making the good good hustle there by Rumson. The ball just about came Ooh, loose at the sure end. I'll tell you what. Big hit. There's some nice tackling going on over there by the Kentucky defense. Now, both of these teams will probably sleep well tonight if they get over the impact of whatever the final result would be. 34-34, the Cards and the Cats. As you look at Stalling has gone over the 100-yard mark. Done a good job tonight. Look at that, 8.5 average. That is just awesome. Yeah, it really is. The production of running back has not dropped off a bit. And talking to John L. this week, he thought the running backs were going to play good. He was real concerned in spring practice about depth at that position, but he felt pretty confident going into this game that Stallings and Lester both would be able to give them. And they've still got a couple other guys behind them should they need them. Well, and it is an advantage, too, because Lester obviously has already checked into the game. So not much drop off at all as Stallings gets a well deserved round of applause. Third down and 11. A big third down play for the Louisville Cardinals. We're going under pressure. Screen pass to Lester. Lester has running room. Lester to midfield. First down, Cardinals. To number 32, Chris Lester. And Ragon looks like he might have injured himself. 17 yards. And boy, he comes up wobbly. Great call by Scott Linehan. They had this little slip screen in the package. They've waited and waited on it. The thing about it is Ragon gets hit. He stands in there as late as he can, lets the rush get there, and then he just dumps it to Lester. Nice screen play there. Yeah, he took a real shot, did Ragon, from Matt Leo. So the ball resting at the midfield stripe. First and 10 Cardinals, a minute 23. You see the clock rolling down in our tied fourth quarter. Here's a completion, but not much room as Branch tried to spin loose. Boyville with only two timeouts now. They had to waste one earlier there on the punt. So you'll probably see after this play, they're gonna start utilizing some of the timeouts. And the no huddle as Stallings is back into the game. Replaces Lester. Oh, bad snap again. Ragone just needs to fall on it. Still loose. McCree picks it up. And he gets down to the three. So Marlon McCree picks up one earlier and takes it in for the score. And man, oh man, what a bad time for the Cardinal turnover here. Another look at it here. First one was high and wide. This one right underneath him. And Dave just needs to get on it there. He's trying to do what he needs to do there. And that's a hard, hard to fall on a ball there. And now no one knows the ball's on the ground. Everyone's downfield. Good hustle by Zeke Parker here. Tough, tough break for the cards there. I'll tell you what. Defense played awful well. Just a really low snap by Jason Padgett. And you're right, right here we're going, and he's trying to make something happen, but you just got to find the ball. And now Kentucky in great shape at the two-yard line, and Lorenzen with 47 seconds remaining. I wouldn't be surprised to see a draw here. Pinner on the carry, not much at all. Number 40, Archie Spitter on the carry. And you know Coach Mummy's going to use all of this block that he can. Yeah, here's the situation we're using that timeout early. He's going to come back. You can use two, but then on the third down, they're going to be able to run the clock down to as low as they need to. So two poor snaps here in the second half. One has led to a sure Kentucky touchdown. And let's hope if you're a Cardinal fan, and I guess if you're a Pet fan, you do hope that the second poor snap leads to a Kentucky touchdown with less than a minute to go. Yeah, I'll tell you, you talked about a game turning on, on a turnover on the second half. That's the second one that's really, really been the difference. So Jared Lorenzen, you get a quarterback draw here. You let the big guy run the ball where you don't have to hand it off or what? I think you'll probably see uh, Pinner again, just like they did on the last play. Probably pound him in there two more times, but never can tell with Coach Mummy. You see the two quarterback comparison. Ragone, the advantage and no INTs, but a couple of costly turnovers, although both the snaps and no slap at Jason Pageant, but they were just not 
exactly. and they're both hard to handle, especially with the ball being wet. Two outstanding quarterback performances tonight for Lorenzen and Dave Ragone. And now here's the quarterback draw to Lorenzen, and he's knocked down at the two. Good call. Good call. Uh, he's a big guy, and you know that uh, all he's got to do is take a couple of steps forward, and he can drag people into the end zone. And now Louisville forced to take another timeout. With 31 seconds remaining. Another look at it. He's just showing pass, showing pass. Michael Everett there got him wrapped up. Boy, he's hard to bring down one guy at a time, but the rest of the defense converges there. You see how mummy with Jared Lorenzen and the offensive Kentucky Wildcats around him here. We have 31 seconds remaining while our crunch forward fourth quarter scoreboard tells the entire story. What it doesn't tell you is that several costly mistakes in this fourth quarter have hurt both of these teams. And we'd like to remind you our bar S total points. 34 for the Cardinals, so that's $102 going to the Dare to Care Food Bank. And don't forget, Bar S Foods available at all your Kroger store locations. Only the best is branded Bar S. Bar S Jumbo Franks and smoked sausages, good for tailgating, are in your backyard. seconds remaining third and goal for Kentucky here's Lorenzen again he doesn't get in clock rolling down with 25 seconds we'll see the Kentucky field goal unit most likely as Kentucky is going to let it run down and try to set up the game winning field goal well our G player of the game is going to be a tough decision well Marley McCree played great on defense you know the obvious thing you might say is Jared Lorenzen but I don't know at this point. I might have to cast my vote for Marley McCree. Of course, the other side, Dion Branch. Dion Branch you got to think about him as well. There's been, there's been quite a few guys came out tonight and put on a heck of a and show. And what about Tony Stallings? He rushed for over 100 yards. Oh, we do have the official that knocked the ball loose. Maybe he would be our G player of the game. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this series has had it all. This is the first time, though, that it's really come down to the end. Uh, uh, here we are, last play. We're going to have a field goal to decide the game here. But it's been, it's been a thrilling game. There's no doubt about it. The people that came back into the stands after the rain delay have really had a heck of a show. What do you think, show. Tony Stallings? I mean, you can go a lot of different ways in this one. We'll go with Tony Stallings as our G player of the game. But right now, this young man, Brandon Sanders, a senior from Versailles, Kentucky, Woodford County High School, will have the biggest kick of his life. It'll be just like an extra point, but he does have an angle to his left. Kentucky trying to pull out a three-point win with three seconds remaining. It's all in the leg of Brandon Sanders. The lines are down. You got a great shot of it. The kick on the way, and it's blocked! Blocked by the Cardinals! Oh, we're going to OT! Oh, my goodness! Michael Brown and Curry Bird! Unbelievable! appeared to kick it low and it was number 12 Curry Burns who comes up with the block and we're going to overtime. I'll tell you we've had it all tonight. I told you you spec the unexpected in this one. Another look at it right here just the chip shot like an extra point. Good snap good hold. Kick it Kicking. way low. Low kick right there and it was hard to tell which there's two guys went up there. Curry Burns was one of them. So we're going to overtime, but first we'll take a break. At the end of regulation, Louisville 34, Kentucky 30.
34. Senators, Kentucky will call the toss. Please let me know right now. Heads. It's a tail. Louisville has won. Okay. Which end of the field? Okay. You're going to go on defense. You're going to play down there. Turn there. Give me the ball. Louisville won, and they will go on defense. Kentucky will go on offense. First down, 25 yard line. Well, there you hear the explanation from our referee. Louisville won the toss and, of course, gets the choice, Craig. And I guess in a situation like this, you always want the ball last. So they elect to go on defense. Yeah, you do. You want to know what you need to do when you get the ball. And not surprisingly at all, Kentucky took the open end of the stadium for their end of downs. So they'll put the ball at the 25-yard line. Of course, Louisville last year lost an overtime game at Army after making a huge comeback. But man, oh man, has this game had a little bit of everything. Yeah, it really has. And what they'll do here, they'll start the ball on the 25-yard line, just like a normal drive now. You've got four downs to get a first down. If you get a first down, you continue moving. Well, a lot of folks left and went home. I hope you're in front of your television enjoying what has been a classic battle between the Cards and the Cats. Kentucky, first chance in overtime. Oh. <laughs> Michael and Josiah, I think he was a wee bit offside. Just a little bit. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. He must have been anticipating a snap. I think he anticipated a snap that did not occur, but he looked pretty athletic doing it. Oh, he did. He's put on about 20 pounds, has Michael Josiah. So Lorenzen and the Cats get the benefit of the easy five yards. And now it's first and five, Kentucky at the 20. Lorenzen pump fake fires into the end zone, incomplete. He was looking again for Derek Smith. Boy, they were going for it all right there. Yeah, they were. By giving them the five yard penalty there, that gives you a lot of leeway in your play calling to go ahead and take a shot at the end zone right away. Come back second and five, You're still in good position. Good play call here. And just, really, out of his, mm. just out of his reach, Donovan Arp gave good effort there, got to Lorenz in there, made him get rid of that ball. Just a hair early. Second down and five. Well, this sports grass has held up tremendously. I mean, it rained cards and cats. Lorenz in from the shotgun. We're in overtime. Lorenz in the throw, fires, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Anthony Floyd, and the Cardinals now will take over. I tell you what, the Cardinal defense has given up 34 points. Matt Brown, the injured Wildcat, but I tell you what, they have come up with some very, very big plays in this game, Craig. Yeah, they really have, and a lot of them have come from the safety position. This one, Anthony Floyd. Coach Smith talked about the safeties. He said they're going to make some mistakes and get some balls behind them, but they're going to make plays. They're both playmakers, and you've had both safeties tonight. Floyd and also Curry Burns making a lot of plays. And give Michael Josiah a lot of credit. He made Lorenzen rush that throw. Yeah, he really did. They brought the heat that time. They brought six players there and jumped in man coverage, and you got the safety roam in the middle of the field there just playing center field. So Matt Brown becomes the second offensive lineman for Kentucky to leave the game at this point. And Louisville now will go on the offense, first and 10 from the Kentucky 25-yard line. We're in overtime. Don Russell, Craig Swaback. Cards on Fox, glad you're watching us tonight in Louisville and in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And after an hour and 14-minute rain delay, we have had a tremendous bluegrass battle. Motion by Branch. Give to Stalling. Stalling takes the middle. Stalling's at the pit. Cardinals win. Cardinals win. Touchdown, Stalling. We picked the right 
team player in the game. Little did we know, pandemonium in the end zone. Tony Stallings, they wondered about Frank Moreau. What would the Cardinals do? And in overtime, Tony Stallings, the junior out of Bedford, Ohio, gives Louisville the 40 to 34 victory in overtime. Oh, what a game. I'll tell you, I've never seen anything like this. You've got the entire team off the bench into the end zone with Tony Stallings in the bottom of counter trap. They've been running it all night. Good job of blocking. He sees an open. I'll tell you what, Tony Stallings, there's a sip on He's gone. He sees the end zone. Unbelievable. Our Jeep player of the game, Tony Stallings, and your local Jeep dealers will donate $100 to the Dare to Care Food Bank. Tony, he was going to keep running into the locker room. Oh, what a game, Craig. I'll tell you what, they're coming back on the field now. To, I believe there's a little trophy they're going to receive. Lavelle Boyd, he's as happy as any former Cardinal could be. And what about Tony Stallings? 144 yards, two touchdowns, and the Cardinals get the win in Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in overtime. Unbelievable game tonight in Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. You've got to give both Louisville and Kentucky a lot of credit for giving us a classic battle tonight, Craig, here in the stadium. I'll tell you, that's why you never say never. You're down there, they're kicking a three-yard field goal for the win, and then five minutes later, you're back, Stalin's running in. I'll tell you what, when they're down on the two yards, oh, look at him go. He's still running, still going. You know, Kentucky's getting ready to kick a field goal on the two-yard line. Not many people think, you know, you're going to go into overtime at that time, but that's why you never say it's over till it's over. One more time. Look at the huge hole here. Wow. And the I'll official you, got in the way the again. Was, <laughs> I'll tell you, he had a hand in everything. But I'll tell you, once it opened up like that, great job by the offensive line. Can't say enough about those guys inside. And look, the bench is already empty and to go see Tony in the end zone. And you know, Craig, there's so many little things that happen in a game. And what about that hustling play by Zeke Parker to come from behind and pull McGree down and not let him get in the end zone. And John L. Smith's team blocked the field goal. You know, that's one happy camper here. But what a great, great game by both Louisville and Kentucky tonight. You hate to see a winner in this game. If you had the old ties, you would have to think this game would have be the appropriate thing to tie. Tom Jurich, the athletic director, and John L. Smith, what an amazing win for the Cardinals and a classy effort from the Kentucky Wildcats. And boy, Jared Lorenzen, you can't say enough about him, but the man of the hour is junior Tony Stallings, our Jeep player of the game. And here's the play that set up the overtime. Here's another look at Curry Burns coming over the top right here. Jumps up high, just gets a hand on it, just enough to get it down. You know, right there you think Kentucky's in the driver's seat. And I'll tell you what, one of the things John L. Smith talked about all week was he wouldn't know how they'd respond to pressure. And I think they've done it. So Tom Jurich and John L. Smith, they celebrate the Cardinal victory in a classic battle here in Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The Governor's Cup, the presentation. Governor Paul Patton presenting the cup. Both of these teams believe tonight that they were going to be the victor, but the Governor Cup, the Governor's Cup stays in the Derby City. Boy, 
Oh, you think he's a little happy? Boy, what a classy game it was. We had an hour and 14 minute weather delay. We lost a lot of our uh, technical equipment, but nonetheless, in overtime, a great Cardinal win in a classy game with the Kentucky Wildcats. For Craig Swaback, I'm Don Russell. What a game at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Louisville 40, Kentucky 34 in overtime. Thanks for being with us as the Cardinals take on Grambling next week and Kentucky at home against South Florida. That wraps it up for Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The Cardinals win it by six in overtime. Thanks for being with us on a special night at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Time to play the Kentucky Lottery. Somebody's gonna win, might as well be you. Hi, I'm Donna Little. Tonight's winning pick three number is three, zero, nine. Once again, tonight's winning pick three number is three, zero, nine. Tonight's drawing is witnessed by the accounting firm of Crochet Zick & Company. Now let's play pick four. Your winning number here is seven, five, three, four. Seven, five, three, four is going to be your winning pick four number for this evening. Now get ready for cash five, where you could win up to $100,000 in one lump sum. We'll get started with number 31, followed by one, number nine, 25, and the final number worth $100,000 is number 12. Once again, those winning cash five numbers are 31, 1, 9, 25, and 12. Tonight's Lotto Kentucky jackpot is worth $4.2 million. And here are tonight's winning numbers. We'll kick it off with number eight, followed by four, number seven, nine, 41, and the final number worth $4.2 million is number 22. Once again, those winning numbers are eight. Things are really heating up here at Cardinal Stadium, and no, we're not talking about the rivalry between the Cats and the Cards. It's just plain hot out here. We brought, we brought soft drinks, we brought water, we brought uh, orange juice, we brought uh, grapefruit juice, we brought every essential thing, we brought carrot juice, everything you need to sustain your body from, from the heat. Well, it's like the PGA. The first few days of the PGA, it was hot, and we all made it, so it's great. You want a bottle of water? Sure. Okay. Emergency medical crews say fluids are a good idea for fans, so is taking cover in a tent but they say they're ready for anyone who may become ill from the heat. This hot weather, humidity. There you go. Thanks. You need to drink more when you're in temperatures like that and out in the sun, so just making sure that they drink plenty of fluids, um, particularly water. There are those here that are counting on making money from the steamy cats and cards. These folks are selling ice cream for a baseball fundraiser. The rain would kill us today, so we're, we just hope it gets hotter and hotter. <laughs> One thing is for sure, if you stay cool, no matter what color you're wearing, everyone is a winner. Go cards! Allison Gardner, News Channel 32, WLKY. Once again, Louisville won the game in overtime. The score was 40 to 34. We'll have more with Dave Reynolds coming up a little bit later. Now, for years, the Courier Journal. Briefing on intelligence matters has been a tradition for presidential hopefuls. It was started by Harry. Well, of course, they instituted this tough alcohol policy. It cost him a player last year. Mm -hmm. Is the same thing going to happen to the Cats again? More problems for UK basketball. Junior forward Jules Kamara has been suspended from the team, effective immediately. Early this morning in Lexington, Kamara was arrested and charged with DUI. And per UK's alcohol policy, Kamara is off the team pending the outcome of this case. No further comment from UK on this matter today. This makes three disciplinary problems this year for Tubby Smith's squad. Guard Desmond Allison got the boot for the same problem right at tournament time last season. And then during this past summer, recruit Michael Southall was hit with a drug physician charge. And he, of course, lost his scholarship. Well, last night at Papa John Stadium, the football cats let one get away, and of course the cards tried their best to give it away. Nevertheless, a thrilling start to the football season. The lightning hit in the third quarter.
sparks and the fans got soaked, but they were glad they stayed till the end because after the lightning, Stallings touchdown Louisville, 20 to 19, Cardinals in front. Second down and eight. then and the first the fumble ruski by the cards on the bad snap. Marlon McCree tracks it down for the Cats for the score. Kentucky up 27 to 20. Ragone to Branch. Dion Branch looking like Cliff Branch. His first action for the Cardinals. That tied the game. UofL was marching. Ragone. Wishes he had uh, called a different play there. Kentucky recovered. They were in business because Lorenzen uncorks to a wide open Quentin McCord who streaks on in 34-27 Kentucky. They go back and forth. UofL came right back. Lester, the running back in his first game. Touchdown, he bulls in. It was 34-34. Here comes Fumble Ruski number two for Louisville. Another bad snap. McCree gets it. But he would not score because this really was the play of the game. Zeke Parker streaks down, prevents the touchdown. That would force Kentucky later to kick a field goal. With three seconds on the clock, the game tied. Ruth's kick was blocked by Burns of the Cardinals. And the game goes to the extra period. Overtime, Kentucky has the ball first. Lorenzen back to throw the lefty. Intercepted by Anthony Floyd, who makes a dandy pick right there. And on the Cards' first play, you all know what happened. Tony Stallings. He streaks on in, virtually untouched for the score. U of L now leads the modern series four games to three. A wild scene last night at Papa John's. I was smiling in the huddle when they called 24. I said, you know what, Tony, you can end it right now. Regardless of what happened all night, you can end it right now. So I just seen a hole and just went. They said you couldn't run. Hey, well, I'll ask them to ask them again, see what they say. <laughs> hey, this is unbelievable. I don't know. I'm so proud of these guys. I could just, I don't know what to say. And that's our object in life is to win the conference championship. And so for me to hang all the mar put all the marbles on the table for one game where I'm going to start some freshmen and they hadn't played before against a team that lives to beat us is, you know, it's not a good deal for us any way you look at it. We get upset about all the excuses that are made, you know? Hey. Oh, our legs were heavy. Give me a break. Come out and play the game. Uh, Coach Smith taking a shot at Coach Hal Mummy. The Cardinals get the victory last night. Uh, also, of course, uh, college football's back. The NFL back today, opening day in the National Football League. The start of Tim Couch's second season. Tim and the Browns with a tough task hosting Jacksonville. And Mark Brunel threw for over 300 yards today. Touchdown pass here to Jimmy Smith, 7-0 Jags. But second quarter, Couch comes right back. He was 19 of 27. There's the touchdown, but the Browns' offense was anemic. Fourth quarter, this put the capper on it for the Jags. Chris Howard scores the touchdown. That made it 27 to 7. Jags over the Browns, 27 to 7 was the final score. All right, Chris uh, Redman's team, the Ravens in action against the Steelers. Poor Craig Hoffman. <laughs> Tony Banks is the starter for the Ravens. He gets the touchdown pass. A big win today over the uh, Steelers today. Baltimore gets the victory. The Colts in Kansas City, and the Colts defense comes up big in the fourth quarter. Jeff Burris with the interception here. 27 yards on the return for the touchdown. Indianapolis wins over Kansas City 27 to 14. Frank Moreau did play for KC. He had three carries today for 15 yards. Today's NASCAR race at Darlington, South Carolina, the Southern 500. And of course, those storms that hit here moved into the Carolinas today, and rain has uh, halted the race a couple of times. They're in a rain delay right now. They have a long way to go to finish it. Dale Earnhardt, at last report, was the leader in Darlington. You got to wonder if they're going to get that one in tonight. I don't know. You have to take that little jab about the Steelers' loss. It's a long season. You have there to get that season. in. A lot of, we'll get it in a lot of times. We'll John jab you a lot of He's not cutting any slack on Hell Mummy, is he? I tell you, he didn't want to take, take anything uh, away from that victory. Those are oh. some fun punches there to watch. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Mike. Well, a lot of young girls will be nursing. Dependable news. This is WHAS 11 News. Coverage you can count on. Good evening, I'm Lisa Brunas. Donna Lacey Marshall has tonight off. Our top story this evening, Jefferson County has its first traffic death. They lost to their interstate rivals. I didn't like it, but it was a good game. Really? Good Get, is UK going to get them next year? Absolutely. They're going to get them in basketball. Well, Tony Stallings burst up the middle of Louisville's first play of overtime to give the Cardinals a 40-34 win over Kentucky Saturday night at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Kentucky had the ball first in overtime, but the Wildcats blew a golden opportunity to win the game in the final minute of regulation. Oh! 
was great. <laughs> I can't talk. Are you surprised? No, I knew he would win. <laughs> Well, the Wildcats have won nine of 13 meetings, but have lost four of seven since the long dormant series was resurrected in 1994. Last night's game broke a tie between the two schools. The series history between U of L and UK since they renewed the rivalry in 1994 was three to three as of last night. Now, of course, U of L is in the lead by one. Well, weather caused a slight delay in today's play at Fuzzy Zeller's Wolf Challenge. Pro golfers and other celebrities are hitting the links this weekend to raise money for the Crusade for Children. The annual tournament brings in celebrities ranging from golfers John Daly to rocker Dweezil Zappa. Now, every year the Wolf Challenge is held at the Cover Bridge Golf Course in Sellersburg, Indiana. But playing golf isn't the only way money is raised for the Crusade. Tonight's the night. It's the auction. This is where it all comes from. So. Hopefully tonight we'll have uh, a successful evening. We've got some great auction items. Now gates for the tournament open tomorrow morning at 7.30. Tickets are $25 for the day. You can call 812-246-8200 for more information about the golf tomorrow as well as the auction this evening. Well, tonight preparations are underway for Vice President Al Gore's visit to Kentucky on Labor Day. Event organizers are setting up for festivities at the Louisville Motor Speedway. Al Gore's visit to Kentucky tomorrow is part of a 24-hour non-stop Labor Day blitz campaign. Gore says he wants to demonstrate he's willing to work as hard as he can for the average American employee. Medicaid. Again, tomorrow's Kentucky visit will be at the Labor Day picnic out at the Louisville Motor Speedway. Picnic runs from noon until 6 and is for local union workers. We will have live team coverage starting at noon right here on Monday. Meanwhile, Republican candidate George W. Bush is taking a break from the campaign trail. Last Thursday, of course, he was here in Louisville pushing his education platform at Butler Traditional High School. This weekend, Republicans and Democrats expect the race between George W. Bush and Al Gore to come down to the wire in Kentucky. Each side claims the advantage heading into Labor Day. Right now, Gore is in the lead nationally with more electoral votes. Gore has 201 votes, which means he only needs 69 more to win November's election. As for Bush, he has 179 votes and needs 101 to win. Republican presidential candidate George W. Bush has agreed to a series of debates with Democratic rival Al Gore. Bush says the first debate will be held September 12th in Washington, D.C. Well, a company which makes anti-lock braking systems wants to have thousands of school buses and other vehicles recalled. The reason they... But then when we found out today about uh, yeah. Jules Kamara, it's disappointing and it's a... The good news, last week they signed a basketball player, right. Jason Parker, who's a big man in the middle, so, but now you lose That's another right. one who's been around for quite some time. For the second time this year, the UK basketball team is losing a player to DUI charges. UK basketball player Jules Kamara was arrested early this morning and is charged with driving under the influence. Under UK's alcohol policy, Kamara is suspended immediately and would lose his scholarship if he's convicted of the charge, there's no comment from Coach Tubby Smith. He's in Hawaii with the U.S. Olympic team. Back in March, Desmond Allison was arrested for DUI, and he lost his scholarship after pleading guilty and left school. Now to football. The game last night. Wow, the storm swirled its way through Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, but something else was brewing, a fourth-quarter finish that will be remembered forever in this football rivalry. The rain delay ended after an hour and 14 minutes, but the game was far from over. Cardinal quarterback Dave Ragone lost the handle on a ball, picked up and returned for a Wildcat score by Marlon McCree. That gave the Cats a seven-point lead. UofL stormed right back to tie it. Ragone releases to Dion Branch. His second touchdown catch of the night came on a drive that took just 45 seconds. With time running out, Kentucky sets up for an 18-yard field goal. A gimme through the uprights and UK wins. Instead, Cardinal safety Curry Burns leaps into the air, raises his arms, and blocks the field goal attempt by Brandon Sanders, forcing overtime. To be honest, I thought it was over. I thought we were not gonna have a chance. I wanted to catch it, but I knew I had it. I knew I had it as soon as it touched my hand. As soon as it touched my hand, I knew I had it, and I knew we had another chance. Obviously, that was a chance for us to win right there, and it obviously put, it gave us a big letdown uh, after our defense had made such a great play to put us in shape. UofL's defense stopped the Cats on their overtime possession. For the Cards, running back Tony Stallings got the call. 
only the UK defense and 25 yards between him and a Cardinal victory. And all I seen was one guy, and I said, if you can't make him miss, you don't need to play running back no more. So I just, I seen Johnny United, so that's how big the hole was, and I, I just took it. You didn't tackle some dude in the back of the end zone, I don't know, and that was it, man. Now, Wildcat players weren't available for comment after the game last night because of the late ending and the long trip back to Lexington. Shift gears now to the NFL. Week number one, the Colts shifted right into gear to open the season by dumping Kansas City. In week one, the Colts are the first team to win at KC in a home opener in 12 years. Peyton Manning passed for 273 yards and a touchdown to Edger and James. James also rushed for 124 yards. The Colts clobber KC 27 to 14. Also in week one, Mark Brunel racked up 301 yards for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tim Couch did throw a touchdown pass for Cleveland, but Jacksonville all over the Browns 27 to 7, the final in Cleveland. The baseball now two games to go in the season for the Louisville River Bats. Tonight at 7.15, the Bats host Indianapolis at Louisville Slugger Field. Following the game, a Labor Day fireworks display tonight. And then the final regular season game is tomorrow at 1.15 p.m. Now we switch to golf. Pro golfers sure don't waste any time letting that ball fly off the tee, especially pro golfers in a pro celebrity tournament like the one at the Wolf Challenge today. Here's Arizona, John Daly. Saturday afternoon at Commonwealth Stadium kickoff is 1.30. And the Indiana Hoosiers finally hit the grid. IU opens the season at home Saturday, hosting North Carolina State at 12.10 p.m. here at Louisville time. A blowout win over San Jose State keeps Nebraska on top of the Associated Press football poll for this week. The Huskers are ahead of Florida State, Michigan, Miami, and Wisconsin. Tennessee is 12th. Alabama tumbles from 3rd to 13th after losing to UCLA. The Boilers are now 14th. Notre Dame climbs to 23rd. Southern Miss is back in 25th. A wreck started Bobby Levante's week.